Hey everybody, welcome back to Paper Mario. Woo! Okay, I'm done. Um, Hooray. <laughs> yeah, let me just get everything set up. Okay, so um, in case you guys are unfamiliar with how this uh, how this uh, playthrough is working, uh, we did part one a couple of days back, and basically how we're doing it is every two chapters we're going to uh is a segment and there's four segments total so um yeah we're going to be doing chapters two uh three and four today and joining me instead of john from last time is ryan hello ryan hello ted how have you been tired <laughs> yeah um i can i can imagine yeah um how late did super castlevania 4 go last night uh we got off at about 2 a.m yesterday Yeesh. yeah so um hopefully it was a fun run though that game is really good yep. And we just passed 8,000 pounds. Yay! Woo! Yeah, we passed a milestone in weird British money. Awesome. I mean... With a £2.50 pence donation from Sout. Hey, I've not been able to catch the first week, but it looks like the thon's been a success with still some cool stuff to come. Great work with all the runners, donations, and all the stream regulars. Oh, thank you very much, dude. Um, anyway, if you're new here, basically we are uh, running a marathon for... Uh, Mind Charities, which is based in the UK, they help people with various mental disorders, and we're just playing video games and having a good time. So, if you press the big yellow donate button below the stream, you can uh, you can donate to a number of different incentives. Uh, they, we've got quite a few bid wars going on, but at, uh, as of right now, the only incentive that has not been met is of Ganon's Fury Showcase and Hyrule Warriors. So. Uh, I would very, I'm running that game, so I would very much like to be able to show that mode off because it's awesome. So if you want to see that, all you have to do is donate to the Ganon's Fury incentive uh, in your donation comments. And yeah, basically that's it. It should be a lot of fun. Now, Ryan, could you do me a favor and tell me what the kill to save wacko ratio is at at the moment? I'm already on the case. <laughs> Okay, because basically this is a this is a bid war that's exclusive to uh, Paper Mario. Okay, save Waka's at 205 pounds. Kill Waka's at 118 pounds. Okay, so save Waka's in the in the lead. You see, Waka's this adorable little blue guy. He's just having a picture perfect day on Mount Rugged, and you can whack him like that to get a Waka bump. And if you whack him eight times, he's dead. So, yeah, uh, if you want me to kill the adorable little fucker and get all the tasty, tasty wack a bumps then uh, you can donate to that. Or if you're a sadist, or if you're, you know, a decent human being and you want me to save the guy, then you can donate to that as well. Uh, save and kill Walker will be going all the way up until the final day of Paper Mario because uh, I'm definitely going to need some wack a bumps before the final area because. It, it can it can get pretty challenging so yeah that's what's going on there so if you want you want waka to die you can vote for that if you want him to live you can vote for that it's just a small little uh tribute to uh games done quick and their their animal killing and whatnot and also super block right here um let's see what party member do i want to upgrade uh god i really don't care about either koopa or per per par carry but I guess I'll do Park Carry because I think he's more useful in the upcoming areas, so I'll do that. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Um, how much of the original Paper Mario have you played? I know you played Thousand Year Door quite a bit, but uh, I played through this game once, and that's it. Once, and that's it. Okay. Because I know uh, you. And, the, and this was way back on the N64, so. Yeah, this game was one of the very last games to come out on the N64, if I remember correctly. It was like 2000, early 2001, so... The well, it, re it references Luigi's Mansion, so... Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's something I need to show off, is Luigi's Secret Diary. I'll do that in the last segment. Um, but, yeah, um, this is one of the very last N64 games ever released, so... You know, it's a. I think it does use the system's power quite efficiently. Like, not that anything is very complex, but the game does run at a very stable frame rate. It does look pretty nice, and... It does. I'm gonna skip this cutscene. It's just it. I love this game. It's a very solid, well-made game that doesn't do. It's not outstanding in the same way that Thousand Year Door does. But I've got a very. I've got a lot of sentimental attachment to this one. So it, it's one of my personal faves. So yeah, I know that you like uh, 
Super Mario RPG more personally, but you know. Yeah, I feel I feel Super Mario RPG is a bit more humorous and a bit more standard RPG fare. I like Paper Mario Thousand Year Door the best, but I feel Mar Mario RPG just does the game part a bit better with. Uh, well, it is compared to Paper Mario. Well, uh, uh, what's it? Uh, Mario RPG basically plays like a Final Fantasy, whereas Paper Mario is very much its own individual kind of thing. Yeah, but I feel Paper Mario One is a little too simple for its own good. Yeah, I, I get what they were trying to go for because the Mario RPGs are tr uh, attempting to be beginners RPGs, and I understand that. So I think, I think you know. It just generally, Paper Mario 1 is a better game to show a newbie, but then again, you could also argue that Mario... You could also argue that Mario RPG is a better introduction to RPGs because it follows... It plays like most other RPGs. Yeah, exactly. So, it's basically just a... It's... Oh, crap. Um, it's basically just a, a preference thing, really. Um, hmm. What to do, what to do, what to do. Uh... Yeah, we have a one pound donation from Ultiki. Hey Ryan, you probably remember me from the BSC fan game stream. Anyway, it's being that part two of Paper Mario is going on because that was near door BSC playthrough. Also, sorry Ted, I put some money to anti-guy fight. Hope you would love a challenge. Love, Taki. Ah, uh, uh, the anti-guy. Which, that's been met, so. Oh yeah, we'll be doing the, we will be doing the anti-guy fight, uh, this segment actually, when we get to the, uh, to Shy Guys Toy Box, which is not going to be for a bit because we do have to do the, uh, we do have to do the, uh, what's it called? Uh, ah, I forget the name of the woods. Forever Forest area first, so we won't be getting to Anti Guy just yet, but it will be later on. We will be getting to him. I thought it was in uh, section three, but whatever. Uh, uh, no, because since we're doing two chapters, a, a, we're doing two chapters, a segment. So, uh, we're, we're doing chapters 3 and 4 today. Anti Guy's in chapter 4, so we're doing him today. Uh, gotcha. Segment 3 is Kent C. Koopa, I believe, is the super boss for that segment. So, yeah. Well, it's still only chapter 3 and 4, so hopefully it doesn't take too, too long. No, it's... Oh, god damn it. I for... What? <laughs> okay, so, um, I uh, just... Okay, so I'm playing this game on the Wii Virtual... Wii U Virtual Console. Um, so I'm using my gamepad instead of my N64 controller. And the thing is, I like using the B button on the N64 controller as the as the confirm button for battles because that's just, you know, it's just more... Um, like, no, for a jump button, actually, is, is more what I like it for. I like to use it as a jump button, but the problem is, is that I also like to use the B button as a back button. And on the N64, the jump button and the confirm button were on the same button because it was just the a button on that so i have a on both the and the wii u gamepads a button and b button which means that a lot of times when i try to press b to go back i press a to confirm and i accidentally did focus instead of trying to go back to the menu uh yeah. so, so it's not as bad as during my test playthrough where i've accidentally where multiple times i accidentally used uh items that i really didn't want to use like there was just wasting a turn uh, but, you know, so it, really it shouldn't be that bad. I just have to get myself back into the groove of it. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit different this time around because, uh, when I was doing my test playthrough, I was playing every day, so I was a little bit more used to everything. Whereas here, like, it was, I think we did part one on the second day of the, of the, we did part one on the second day of the, uh, marathon. So that was actually about a week ago, actually. So, um... I'm not, I, I kind of have been not playing just long enough to not be in the swing of things anymore. But since the remaining parts are going to be a little bit closer together, I should be all right. And mm -hmm. also for be doing that mini boss, you don't actually need to do this. But for beating that mini boss, we get quick warp points to the first three towns in the game. So that's pretty sweet. And actually, I want to, it's actually good that I'm back in Goomba Village because now I can get another Goom Nut and then uh, have tasty cook that for uh, stuff later so woo woo for that um we yeah. have a question in the chat asking when are we going to do emerald for brain scratch cons that's entirely up to you ted um well we're never going to do emerald for brain scratch because o omega ruby and Sa um, omega ruby and alpha sapphire are just better and you know thinking about it back in the day when i did do uh crystal and and uh yellow for for brain scratch 
That was mostly just due to a lack of a way to record the remakes. But since we have the ways to record the remakes now, I don't need to I don't need to come up with excuses anymore and I can just I can just do whatever the hell I want. So yeah. But Ted, I thought you liked the Gen 3 battle mechanics the best. Um I like them, but I like them in terms of competitive. Again, I like them in terms of competitive the best. Yes, that's true. But when you're playing through the single player in a Pokemon game, it really doesn't matter what version you're playing. So, yeah, like I'd rather just deal with the updated, the updated shit from Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. So, yeah, um, that'll get done eventually. We've got like three RPGs that were recorded first. So, yeah, eventually. Oh yeah, that's one thing about live streaming that I uh, uh, you can't you can't skip you can't cut past random battles in a live stream. You gotta actually ah damn it. Uh, okay, see this is what happens when I try to talk and play video games at the same time. I start making stupid mistakes. They're playing an RPG, Ted. Yeah, but I had to do action commands. <laughs> Timed hits. They're called action commands in this game and in every other Mario RPG. Timed hits. No, you're you're just wrong. You're, Time just, you're just wrong. Watch out. No, uh, why? They're just they're they're all just standing there. They're not. Watch even out. Standing. He knows about timed hits. <laughs> Let's see. Do I? Hmm. If actually, if I use the snowman doll, I'll kill all of the uh, all of the buzzy beetles. So so yeah, I think I'll do that. I don't even need any more of these guys until chapter five anyway. So might as well. You see, um, earlier like. In previous playthroughs, I used to, especially when I was younger, I would completely ignore items for the most part. And now that I'm older, knowing that items can actually do shit makes playthroughs even more of a cakewalk. Not that this game is too hard. Uh, like, some parts towards the end of the game are pretty, are, can be somewhat difficult, but the game as a whole is generally pretty easy. Um, uh, knowing that you can that items are actually relatively effective in this game makes it pretty pretty makes most random battles pretty much a non-issue. Ooh, the power smash badge. Do I have anything that I would rather? Uh, I don't know what's called. And people are asking when the Sonic Advance playthrough is. That depends on when Sega gets the uh, games up on the Wii U Virtual Console. Yeah, cause I, I'm sure any of us would. Uh, would record Sonic Advance if it were up on the, the, the Wii U Virtual Console. Isn't yeah. it up in Japan already, too? I, th I think so. Yeah, because I'm really surprised about that, considering that Japan hates Sonic. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I don't want to go down there yet. Um, Japan okay. doesn't outright hate Sonic. They're just kind of ambivalent to him. Yeah, well, he was specifically designed to appeal to an American market, so I guess it makes yeah. sense. <laughs> but, you know, it's just kind of like, when are they going to Oh, wait, hold on a moment. I've got just enough to take advantage of Powerbomb. And I fucked up. Wonderful. Um, uh, but yeah, Sonic... Sec, sec, yeah, but that, Japan doesn't really care about Sonic at all, right? Like, Not really, no. I think it was really only like the adventure games that did pretty well over there, was it? Or uh, uh, I, I would have to look up sales numbers and reception. Okay. But I, I'm pretty sure it was only after the franchise generally became more anime that the that they started caring about him a little bit more. And I have no idea how well the more modern Sonic games, and by modern I mean like past five years, I don't know how well those games have done in Japan at all, so I can't even really speak to that either. Okay, so now I'm going to not fuck up basic platforming and get into this area, which probably I can't even... Oh, no, I can do stuff in here. Okay. Um, there's a... Um, there's a star piece over there, and I'm pretty sure if I ride... Uh, up... Tom says the audio is not synced. What are you talking... Tom, the... I looked at my replay. The audio was fine. Look, um... Look, I have my TV. I have my TV muted, um, and the audio. I'm looking at my X split. Mario's jump sound happens when he jumps, and it looks fine to me. 
So, I think Tom is exaggerating. So. Alright, so just get on with it then. Yeah, basically. Oh, wait, I did want to go over here because now I can have all of my party members uh, maxed out. So, awesome. Cooper is upgraded to super rank, so I guess it didn't even really matter who I, who I picked way back then. Yeah, no, I'm looking at my, I'm looking at my, I'm looking. Yeah, Tom it, says it's fine. Yeah, it's, see, it's, yeah, see, it's, it's fine. Damn it, Tom, you ruined my groove. Oh, we're not even, ugh, oh, up. Uh, hmm. I was going to get mad at the curse, but at least it saves a turn here. So, whatever. Yeah, it saved a turn. Thanks, curse. You really helped out. Yeah, it's better than nothing. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, like, uh, when we were playing earlier, um, when I was playing earlier, I should say, um, the, uh, with, it, with John, I'm pretty sure the first thing the curse did was absolutely jack shit useless, so, you know. There's that. And, oh, no, wait, hold on. I'm thinking of a different area. There's another super block we can get here, but we can't even take advantage of that until we do, uh, what's this called? We can't even take advantage of that until we get the super, the ultra hammer. So, uh, we're basically done here, I think, until after chapter, uh, after chapter three, when we can, after chapter three, where we can break this here board. So, yeah, um, let's get going. Um, okay, so I don't think there's anything else we have to do in the meantime before we actually get to Chapter 3 proper. Uh, so in so I'm just going to have Tasty cook some stuff, and then I'm going to go to the Toad House to heal up, and then we're going to go into the actual Chapter 3. Uh, in between yeah. chapters, there's always this kind of, um, kind of uh, faffing about you want to do. It's pr pretty much like every RPG, where... Every time you kind of finish a main objective, it's always worth your time to look around in a town to try to see if there's any junk that they, that people will want you to do. Mm -hmm. We have two donations, two pounds from Multikey again. V again, I really love how you love Thousand Year Door a bunch, but do you enjoy the annoying moments like backtracking? Also, what's your thoughts on the other Mario RPG series, aka Mario and Luigi? Um, I think that the back... I do not mind the backtracking in Mario... In Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door too much. With, like, the only exception probably being, like, Chapter 4, where you go back and forth the same route, like, three times. That's a little bit annoying. But other than that, it's really not a big deal to me. Because uh, I just... I find running about the areas and fighting in, you know, random battles, I don't even really mind those. Because the battle system is so much fun. Uh, so I don't really mind it. I'd rather have a smaller world that's interesting and well laid out than, uh, than a world that's big but has nothing in it. And for what it's worth, I think Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, all the areas have plenty of secrets and stuff to make all of, to make exploring stuff still interesting, even on, even when you're backtracking through places. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. When it comes to other Mario RPG series, um, Super Mario RPG is pretty good. It's, uh... It, yeah, it's pretty good. I think it's just I, I came to it way too late, and I was expecting something completely different than what I got. So, yeah. Um, then uh, Mario and... Oh, wait, hold on. I should check the bad shop. When it comes to Mario and Luigi, I generally don't... I generally don't care for it uh, as much because... I don't know. I felt like... I feel like they kind of tell the same jokes an awful lot. Like, not necessarily like, this, like line for line the same, but there's a little bit more like it kind of seems to be like oh luigi's luigi's being scared oh you know kind of it kind of repeats that over and over again and i feel like the beginnings are often really slow and the only game that i really played a significant amount of was partners in time and that but that's game, the worst one it is the worst one and i just i did not have a good time playing that one and when i tried to play superstar saga the beginning in that was even slower than the beginning in Paper Mario, which is already pretty slow. So, eh. It's just, I like, I like, um, I like Paper Mario better. Also, another thing is, is that battles in Mario and, and Luigi tended to go on way too long. 
like even random battles and especially boss boss fights and partners in time i think went on for like 15 f fucking minutes it was ridiculous so yeah i don't generally care for pa uh, mario and luigi too much I, I might i might give the series another shot eventually but eh, it's not well, you're, on you're gonna want to play paper jam so nah i don't I really don't care about Paper Jam, to be perfectly honest. I just, I want a normal goddamn Paper Mario game, so, yeah. Um, I'm probably, I do not give a shit about Paper Jam at all, so, yeah. Anyway, if you try to go into Forever Forest before you, this point, this guy will keep you from going any farther. But if you, you just have to tell them that you are invited to Boo's Mansion. And he tells you the general trick of the forest, and that's that, um... Wherever there's something different uh, in the in the background, that's where you wanna. Uh, that's the exit that you wanna go. It's kind of like the Lost Woods from, uh, from what's it called, the Lost Woods from uh, uh, Ocarina of Time. In that, if you go out the wrong, uh, if you go through the wrong doorway, you'll be taken back to the beginning. Oh, and Forest Fuzzies, I do not like these guys. Um, basically, their their shtick is that they'll. Um, they'll try to suck health from you, like normal fuzzies, but they're dicks about it, so yeah. Ah. I can... And we have a two-pound donation from Tom Carter slash Index Sonic. Hey guys, enjoying the Nintendo-thon. I gave money to Sonic-a-thon last year and enjoyed that one a lot. Glad to see my friends Tom and Garrett doing another, another thon. Seeing members of Hellfire Comms, BSC, FTC, and everyone else to help out. P.S. Favorite Mario RPG. We've already kind of just went over that. Thousand Year Door. Yeah. Which we just started a playthrough of on the Brain Scratch channel. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, so... People are generally liking uh, Mario, uh, Paper Mario on Brain Scratch, right? Like, I didn't... Yeah, well, I didn't... it's the first. It's the first part, too, so... Yeah. Ah, shit, I dropped my... I, keep... I need to find a better way to keep my sensor bar stuck up. Because I like to put... My, my chair is actually relatively close to my TV... And I like to keep it, I like to keep it, uh, I like to put my legs out, but that just generally re results in me, um, that generally results in me knocking the sensor part down a lot. So, yeah, I need to, I need to come up with a better solution to that problem, but I'll do that later. Um, yeah, um, but anyway, I think we're now officially halfway through the marathon, uh, Ryan? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, we're, you know... It flies by pretty quick, doesn't it? Like, feels that way at times, yeah. One week from now, we're not going to be doing any game. No, actually, we are going to be doing games a week from now because we've unlocked incentive stuff. <laughs> um, uh, Mario Sunshine starts at what's this called? Sick. Uh, wait, hold on. Where the hell's the different thing in this one? I think it's oh the eyes are flashing okay it's just the the screen is a lot darker in this in this area so I couldn't even really see that and I think that's something where the audio delay was really kind of messing with me too because uh, normally you can kind of hear it go like G -g 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 -g. but since uh, I'm not hearing that until after I pass it I'm not even really I'm trying not to pay attention to the audio very much in this playthrough actually just so that I don't uh, get distracted um, okay, so I think we should be about halfway through the forest at this point. So we are, we're making progress. Um, if I remember correctly, the thing about this one... Oh, wait, hold on. This is a guy you definitely don't want to miss. This was the Bulb Bulb. The, I think his name is Bulb, Bub Ulb. This is the Bub Ulb that I had the trouble, hardest time trying to find. Because I just, I didn't think to look there in the forest. But if I remember correctly... We're trying to look for a tree that has, like, a face. Should it... Yeah, it's this one. Okay. So, there we go. And... Uh, you know that you're in the last area because... Um, you know that you're in the last area because it'll have, like, a sign. Oh, piranha plants. There we go. The fuck just happened? Uh, okay, my TV just did something weird. Did the stream, like, have a... Have a dirt moment, uh, Ryan. Uh, I need to wait for it to catch up. Okay, well, look for something weird happening at the beginning of a fight with Piranha Plants. If nothing weird happened, 
happened, then we should be fine. So. It, it skipped. It skipped like a couple frames, but that's it. Okay, I don't have any drop frames. I don't know what the hell was going on with my TV at that point. I'm sorry about that. Um, any. Anyway. That's uh, fine. It just it just skipped the animation where you whacked it whacked it with the hammer. So no biggie. Okay. All right. I don't even know what the hell even happened there. Like for some like my TV briefly turned on and off again. Like I I don't think we had like a power surge because the the Wii U's still on and I'm running out of I'm running out of out of health. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, hold on. I can try the, the Dizzy Shell, I think is what... Yeah, we can try the Dizzy Shell and see how well that works out for me. I've never really tried to use this move. Oh, it, it, it kind of worked. Um, okay. Ow. Well, at least I'll survive it. Ow. Okay, okay yeah. Um, I'm going to use this turn to... So much for me, like, trying to use status effects and shit. <laughs> You see, this is what happens when I try to play smart. It just generally does not work out for me. So, back to doing it the old-fashioned way. Um, yeah, so... <sighs> Damn it. Okay. Yeah, this is... I'll do refresh again. Who needs star power? Um, really at this... I think Chapter 3 is really the last point in which refresh is still... A useful move because by the time you get to chapter four five heart health and five HP really is not all that much and you don't encounter status effects and not often enough that being healed from them is often an issue so I guess I just want to use it while I can lullaby is always situational so there's that and I believe this is the area because there's lots of glowing mushrooms so uh, there's either this is either the last one or there's one more set after this. Okay, yeah, there's one more set after this. You gotta find the air. You gotta find the bush that doesn't have the mushroom. The flowers fall down like that. Um, do I want to fight you? Well, I guess I have to now. Um, to do power shell. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, did you play this game, uh, for the first time? Did you play it when it first came out, or did you play it later? Uh, when it first came out on the N64. Did you, like, rent it, or did you buy it? Or uh, I think, it? I'm pretty sure I had it. Okay. Well, I don't, well, kind of, trying to rent, uh, RPGs is a little bit weird, I think. Be well, not weird, but it doesn't seem to be as common to me, I think, because... Like, these aren't generally something you can beat in a weekend, unless if it's the only thing you do that entire weekend, so. I never actually really rented an awful lot of games as a kid. I, if I remember correctly, the only game I've ever rented is, uh, is Kirby 64. And even then, like, I couldn't beat it in the weekend that I had it. And so, like, this was one of the only times my mom... Oh, look at that! The curse did something useful! It doubled my star points when I actually got a decent number, so I think I should actually level up. Yeah! Woo! Um, okay, hold on. I've leveled up badge points twice, I've leveled up heart points twice, and I've leveled up fire po flower points twice, so I'll level up heart points again. Uh, but yeah, like one of the only times my mom ever bought me a video game for no reason was when um, we got... Uh, was was when she bought me Kirby 64 just because I really liked the game and I didn't um and I was gonna have to give it back from to Blockbuster so she just went out and just straight up bought it which was which was pretty cool of her like that didn't happen very often like I really only got games given to me for Christmas and my birthday so it was very I hate fuzzies uh god uh they they, they multiply which is obnoxious um, but yeah, I didn't really have games given to me very often, just for no good reason, so that was really cool. Uh, and I don't think that, that's really the only time I can remember off the top of my head being a, given a game for just basically no good reason, so, you know, it was neat. Oh, uh, Ryan, do we have any new donations? Let me check. We have two new donations. One one pound donation from Krieger Zeta. Took me long enough to donate a charity marathon for some reason. Anyway, I like you guys, especially the BSC crew. Ever since the BSC implements the 2009 commentary on Sonic 06. Looking forward to Super Mario Sunshine. Muhahaha. 
well, we won't get to Super Mario Sunshine if you guys don't get... 9,600 you... pounds. Yeah, 9,600 pounds. So we're less than 2,000 pounds away, though, now, if we've passed 7,000, right? So, what, less than 3,000, do you mean? Oh, yeah, sorry. We, le less than, two, less than like, 1,500 or so. Less than 1,500, yeah. We're getting pretty close, and we've got about a week to get there, so I think we can do it. And we have a 3 pound, 21 pence donate from Extreme Death. Hey, guys, glad to know I'm helping out to this cause. And again, best of luck to everybody involved, especially Johnny with Sunshine. My donation will go to Runner's Choice. What do you want, Ted? Uh, Ganon's Fury, because that's the only one left that... That's the only in, That's the only not bid war incentive left. Um, uh, how much... Uh, after that donation, how much money is left in that incentive? Uh, let me check. Um, are you doing incentives, or is Mia doing them? Uh, I'm doing incentives. Okay, cool. Okay. We are uh, basically 170 pounds out of 500, so still a ways to go. Yeah, but I'm I'm sure we can do it, especially considering that if we do do Ganon, the cutoff point for Ganon's Fury will be at the end of the Adventure Mode Showcase for, for Hyrule Warriors. And that's still, that's like the entire playthrough, so... Um, we're going to have all day tomorrow to get to Ganon's Fury. I'm sure we'll be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I mentioned this when we were doing the uh, the playthrough yesterday. Those doors look like chocolate bars. Um, okay, that wasn't what I was going to mention. Um, back when I was first playing this game for the first time, so this is 2001. Um, this game is basically all... Uh, this. Uh, I played Banjo-Tooie uh, all spring and summer, and I played ba uh, Paper Mario uh, all spring, summer, fall, and winter. Um, it was basically the only thing I played until I beat the game, which was coincidentally like two, or, like a week before Christmas when I got my GameCube. Uh, but uh, the original Paper Mario had several points where I got stuck, the first of which being um, right at the very beginning of the game where you have to talk behind you have to go behind the you have to go behind the 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 uh, merlin's desk in order to get past the cooper bros but um this to booze mansion was another place that i got stuck in for a long time but it is a cool area because there's plenty of hidden secrets like if you jump in here you turn into 8-bit mario woo specifically it does, it does nothing yeah but they have a hidden area like this in every part of in every mario rpg i believe except for maybe sticker star i don't remember in sticker star but there's definitely an area like this in in mario rpg and paper mario in and in thousand year door so that's pretty cool um i like the thousand year door one a little bit better because it not only 8-bit assizes uh mario but it 8-bit assizes all of his partners too which i just think is neat um but anyway um the whole puzzle element of this area is we've got this this boo without a this boo picture without a frame and you need to find the picture in order to get to the third floor so and you, there's a couple of rooms um this was where i got stuck for the longest time because i think i didn't for some reason i didn't think to <laughs> I forgot that that happened, <laughs> um, but I didn't think to, I think I, I checked one of those brown ones first and it crushed me, and so I didn't think to open up this kind of grayish tan door first, and so I was stuck here forever, uh, not knowing what to do, but then you find these boos, and if you, you have to play a little mini game with them in order to find the record, so, um, hold on a moment, I might go get a little bit quiet because... I need to keep an eye on where it is. This isn't really all that hard, though, because he just drops it once, and they don't, like, shuffle it around very much, so I just gotta keep an eye on that one boo that's in the back now, and it's circling towards the front. Yeah, uh, okay, let's let's get that fucker. There we go. I don't remember- I think if you get it wrong, all that happens is you just gotta try again. I don't think that there's any real punishment for getting it wrong, so, you know, just, just keep on going. Uh, yeah. Um, Ryan, has, if, has, does the chat have any questions? Uh, I'll keep an eye on it. Okay, cool. Sorry, it's just that it's storming here, so my dogs are going a bit nuts. Ah, uh, okay. Um, ah, uh, well, you know, I guess it just has to be that way, because the weather is nice where I am. Oh, this, <laughs> this is the, the, the record player. In order to, this was something that tripped me up when I first played the game. 
you've got to tap in beat with the music. It's uh, like an old-timey remix of the original Super Mario Brothers theme. And you can keep on playing it as long as you tap the A button to the rhythm. Uh, but it'll get this boot of dance. So what you got to do is press the the B button. And then uh, he'll stop. And then you can go to the chest while the boo is dancing and slacking off. And he gets very upset about it because that was his... He had literally one job and he couldn't do it. <laughs> Damn it, Derek. No, not not Derek from Game Explain. I named that boo Derek for some reason. So, whatever. Joke fail. Let's get on with it. <laughs> um. Yes, get on with it. Yay, get on with it. Oh yeah, another thing that's cool. You you land on that that cushion and you just you land on this uh this chandelier. I'm a gonna swing from the chandelier. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sing. Um, but and then you put the weight on the chandelier in order to go to the bot to the basement. Oh look, a treasure chest. I'm sure that there's nothing that ah ah damn it. Monster in a box. Oh no, they just drop the chandelier and you think it's gonna land on you. And mm. yeah, there, I don't think there's ever a monster in a box in Paper Mario actually. Uh, and that's always my least favorite thing to happen in RPGs because it's it's just the most dickish thing. Yeah. Okay, so there's the painting that we want to get, but we can't get it here. I just like blowing up the, the wall from the other side because I think it's fun. So, yeah. Um, I believe we have to go into this room in order to... Oh, yeah, we have to go into this room and then to the room to the to the right in order to get the super boots, finally. Um, that's one thing about uh, Paper Mario... Uh, I think it was Paper Mario, in Paper Mario 1, you got the Super Hammer before the Super Boots, and in Paper Mario 2, they swapped it for some reason. You have a question, are you going to be doing Pikmin 2 for BSC eventually? <laughs> well, you say, well, I think the the logical thing to do would be to do Pikmin 2 before Pikmin 3, but I kind of don't really like Pikmin 2 very much. So. Well, then get then get it over with. <laughs> I, I, I guess. It's not, like, it's not like I'm asking you to 100% it or anything. Just do those things we discussed at the time. Yeah, but then I'd be then I'd be taking the easy way out. And then, you know. But, you know, eventually, I'm just I'm going to slack on it. <laughs> That's just how I do then, things. Then we won't get to Figment 3 for a long time. <laughs> I'm, uh, oh, look. Uh, Star piece should, if I can get the... If I can get the what's it called so done right. The there should be a hidden star piece somewhere in this room. Uh, you because if you randomly if you randomly what if you randomly uh, ground pound in a room you can sometimes oh there it is you can sometimes sometimes the the ground will shake and then you can find these trap doors with star pieces hidden in them. This is part of the reason why I've never found all the star pieces because it will it requires you to backtrack throughout the entire game and find hidden star pieces like that in earlier levels and I don't I don't feel like it so yeah but I believe once we do this yeah we're um we're in the area that eventually becomes the shop so this is actually one of the better shops in the game too because I believe this is the earliest place in the game where you can get life life rooms so uh, you can start go you can start going to the shop as soon as you get uh, your next party member so uh, keep that in mind. And actually, one, two, three, four, mm. five. We have a five-pound donation from Selder. Okay. Hey, Ted, took your advice and got full box puzzle game with Malo, different name in the U.S. Really loving it. Tons of levels for cheap. Re, re fun with so simple in design, yet it can be so tricky. Thanks, man. Good luck with the run. Runner's choice. So I guess that's for Ganon's. Yeah, Ganon's Ganon's Fury. Um, thanks, dude. Uh, fall block. Uh, did it say fall blocks? Um, well, I think it said fall blocks, but sure, whatever. Uh, okay. Well, it's it's okay. So for some reason in the Europe they have different names for all of the the Mo series <laughs> Pushmo. It's Pushmo. It's Pushmo, Crashmo, and Stretchmo. In the U.S., I believe it's uh full blocks. Uh, I believe it's uh I can't remember what it, the, the names are, but. All I know is is that um, I believe he's playing what's our equivalent of Crash Mo is, and that's actually one I haven't played. Out of all of those games, uh, Stretch Mo is easily my favorite. It is a it is an absolutely great game. So I'm glad you really enjoy it. I, I always I always feel really happy whenever uh, like a game I talk about on 
online uh people get interested enough in the game in order to play it for themselves and then they end up really liking it like that's just something i i always feel really happy when it happens so thank you dude for uh for enjoying the game or well i guess you whatever yep you're, you're or i guess in this instance i should be saying you're welcome but you know fuck it um <laughs> let's just keep on going um, yeah, so we're basically at the end of the Booze Mansion mini area at this point, because we've got the, um, we've got the painting now. One thing that I actually think is really cool is if you get the portrait without ever talking to the frame, he has an alternate line of dialogue where he says, oh, I didn't even, you didn't even, ha I didn't even have to tell you what to do. So that was just, I think that's really cool that they, they kind of reward, they kind of reward people for, for that. It's something that you don't see in an awful lot of games so yeah so i think yeah here's where we get Bo, and Bo is one of my favorite party members in the game both in terms of uh personality and in terms of battle efficiency uh it's actually kind of fitting that i get my in both uh games uh paper mario one and thousand year door my favorite party members are found in the quote-unquote spooky levels so that's pretty cool but I like Bo because she's sassy, and I enjoy sassy characters. Um, her design's also pretty cute, too, with the bows and stuff. Um, uh, and she's also, generally speaking, the best damage dealer in the game. Uh, the only caveat to that is that she can't really do anything to enemies that have uh, defense points, because uh, she does a lot of small attacks as opposed to, like, one big attack. So against anything that doesn't have defense, in most, game, most enemies in the game don't have a lot of defense uh Bo is the best uh, damage dealer in the game so that's why i like like her a lot so yeah and also she's she's sassy to alfred or bootler or whatever so <laughs> i i love this i love the sprite of of her yelling i just i think that's hilarious for some reason so yeah so i also like this line of dialogue Bo join the party like it or not <laughs> Well, I mean, you have to get every party member in the game anyway, because you can't get past without them. But it, before this, every single one of them has given you an option. But here, she's just like, yeah, I'm joining your party, Scrub. Deal with it. So actually, um, I don't need any to buy anything at the moment, but I am going to go to the shop just so that I can... Um, just so that I can check some items because I've got quite a bit right now and I don't and I know there's gonna be some stuff I wanna uh, I know there's gonna be some stuff that I wanna hold on to so I'm gonna hold on to one of these whack a bumps um, uh, do, do, do. Uh, I don't really need the I don't really need two fried eggs either so that's basically down the hatch <laughs> yeah no that's basically all I need to do so yeah awesome so with that, we're gonna just continue on our way. I believe Boo. I believe one interesting thing about Paper Mario is is that shopkeepers will sell the same items, but sometimes for different prices. If I remember correctly, Bo, uh, the Boo Mansion shop is a little bit more expensive than some other shops. So just keep that in mind. Um, really, it the the only thing about it is, is that it's convenient at the moment. And it's one of the only places where you can buy uh, life shrooms, which you do need to do. Like, you do, will need an extra life shroom, I think, for one of the Koopa Coot side quests, which I'm not doing because most of them are really fucking boring. <laughs> so, yeah. Also, you can't even go into Gusty, Gusty Gulch until after you get bu a bow, so this is a required part of the game. I'm, generally speaking, I'm skipping most of the optional junk, um, because, just for time purposes... Uh, but the the optional bosses I, I wanted to leave in because those can be fun, but I made them incentives for that reason. Oh, and Hyper Goombas. These are the Goombas that happen after you get, after they collect all seven Super super Emeralds, are they? Yeah, Hyper is Super Emeralds. That's not confusing. I'm, I'm glad that they made those, they, they got rid of those things. It's dumb. <laughs> uh, okay, so anyway, since this is the first battle we actually have with the, um... With the super boots, they basically just oh, they got tattled automatically. Awesome. Um, but yeah, the just so you guys know, the super boots did up my jump power from two from one to two, so that's pretty cool. Uh, not that these enemies are particularly hard in any way, but you know, just saying. And I think, um, 
I don't know if we even run into spike type or Goombas at this point, but I believe... Yeah, no, we don't. But, yeah, I, I'm just going to keep Mario and, Goom and Goombario just for this fight, because switching mid-fight is always a pain in the ass, so... Yeah, I can't wait till we get the quick change batch. It's coming soon. It's coming at the end of this chapter, but I just... I, lo I, I love that thing, and it, it always feels like a handicap not having it on, so... Yeah. Um... Ryan, are there any other questions from the chat? Uh, let's see if there are any. Okay. Um, in the meantime, I'll just make my way through Gusty Gulch as normal. Um, now, in case you guys are wondering, generally speaking, I like to fight every enemy in the game, like, with a few exceptions. Uh, I like to fight every enemy in the game one time. So that's why I'm going out of my way to fight these, um... That's why I'm going out of my way to fight these Paragumas. That's, I, I just, I like to fight every enemy in the game once, because I feel like if you do that, generally speaking, you'll have enough, uh, you'll have enough, uh, star points in order to get through the game without too much trouble, so. If you, in case you were wondering, that's basically why. Um, you can skip item, you can skip fights and be okay, um, again, one of the great things about Paper Mario games is that since they're, they give you so many options, you can do a lot of crazy challenge runs in this game. Like, uh, you can do uh, one. You can do a run specifically called Danger Mario Run. Well, that's just the fan name for it. But basically, you get it so that you have. You can actually talk to a specific character and get your health below 10, but you never up your HP, and you use specific badges to get Mario to keep Mario at one HP at all times, and then and then you take advantage of a specific uh, badge called, I believe it's Last Stand, where if you're at 1 HP, your attack power goes through the roof. And it's just, it's it's massively impressive watching runs like that, so. So someone's asking, what are our favorite Mario parties? Uh, two, three, and four. Uh, three, three. <laughs> um, <laughs> I haven't played enough of the other ones to say, which ones are my favorite, but I like three quite a lot. I never actually played a lot of, uh, a lot of two. Um, I know that that's a, a favorite for a lot of people is Mario Party 2, but, um, I never owned it. Uh, actually, I believe I got Mario Party 3 close to the end of the, of the N64's life cycle as well, because I believe that was another, that was another, uh, late, uh, N64 game, but, um, Mario Party 3 was a game I think I got from a aunt who lives far away as a as a late birthday present. Um, yeah, because I got it in the middle of the summer, but my birthday's in April, so it was a very late birthday present. But it was a, it, it's a game that I played a lot and I enjoy it quite a bit. Mm. I generally like it better than two because I feel like the boards are a little bit more interesting, and I like I like the mini game variety a little bit more too. Because in Mario Party, in Mario Party two. No, uh, there, uh, not, there's just a lot of mini games that are repeated from one, so I like that there are more new games in Mario Party 3, but that's just me. Um, also, Mario Party 3 has Eats a Pizza, which is just, like, the greatest thing ever, so, you know, there's, there's that. Um, yeah, Mario Party 3 has great mini games, like, Vine with Me, Eats a Pizza, all that, it's, it's just great. And I believe if I charge and use a power a power stop a power smash, I should be able to one shot a hyper cleft. Two, three. Yeah, that's the most FP efficient way to 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 beat a, a hyper cleft because other otherwise you would have have to use two uh, power smashes, and that's four HP as opposed to here where we only use three. So, also chapter three has some of the best music in the game, in my opinion. Uh, this is uh, I forget the name because uh, they never really and I don't think I, I don't actually own the soundtrack, but the kind of gusty gulch theme is one of my favorites because what the hell I thought I I thought uh, whatever um I thought that uh, they had shown the the they had shown the uh, the they had shown the HP totals for normal Goombas earlier, but you know what whatever um uh. I love the Gusty Gulch theme. I think it, it's great, and the areas. I also love the 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 Boo's Mansion, like the Boo kind of theme in this game. I I really like the waltzy kind of nature of it, and especially once we get uh, to the end of Chapter Three, it's got 
two of the best songs in the entire game. So, I, I think this, I think Paper Mario 1 has one of the most underrated soundtracks in the series. So, yeah. yeah MPLD9919 asks what we think of his, of the, of a Hyrule Warrior the oh, side soundtrack. come on! Come on! Sorry. Uh, the, the curse uh, just increased my defense on a turn where all of the enemies were asleep. I'm sorry, that was just... Uh, with regards to the question, I have no idea because I haven't heard anything, so... Uh, what was the question again? I'm what sorry. do you think of my idea of a Hyrule Warrior Suffied soundtrack? For what, I don't know. That's just what he says. He links to something which I can't look at at the moment. Uh, I don't know. Um, Hyrule Warriors has a pretty good soundtrack. Um, I can say that, so... Yeah, Hyrule Warriors has a pretty good soundtrack, and that's pretty much all I can say regarding that, so... Yeah. Someone's asking when are we going to play Mad World? Uh, probably not considering that's an incredibly tedious and one-note game. Wait, hold on. Is Matt is that the the Wii game that's all black and white? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I never I never played that game. Was it any good? Uh, it was all right. Okay. The um, problem is it was incredibly repetitive. It was kind of like a what does it was. It was a beat 'em up. It was a beat 'em up. Okay. Ah, whatever. Um. Yeah, um, I never really had too much interest in that game, though, uh, but apparently it was relatively good, so, you know, there's that, um, but yeah, I don't think we're ever gonna get around to it. Didn't that game recently get a sequel, too? Uh, no, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure, well, not, like, recently, recently, but, like, within the last year or two, I thought that game got a sequel. No, uh, I don't think it did. I'm, I, are you sure? I pretty, I'm, I'm almost positive it got a sequel of some sort, but... Whatever. Um, like, I don't think it was called Mad World 2. I think it was, like, a completely different title, which is probably why nobody really heard about it. But I remember back when the Wii was younger, like, that was that was a game that people were talking about a lot because, oh my gosh, the Wii isn't, isn't for the, the casuals anymore. It's, it's hardcore, man. And I love how there were, like, four games in a row that came out for the Wii that uh, people were like, oh my gosh, the Wii isn't for casuals. Like, there was, um... There was no more heroes in Mad World, and that was about it. There was also, what, the Conduit? That was also like, oh my gosh, look at this game that's totally hardcore on the Wii. Um, that came that turned it That turned out to basically just be GoldenEye. <laughs> yeah. I did like the GoldenEye Wii remake, though. That was a good game. Did you ever play that? I think I played it once. It's a, it's a good game. Um, uh, I, I don't have too much experience with the original GoldenEye. Uh, really, all I did was play the multiplayer with friends. Uh, but, you know, um, the, the new GoldenEye is pretty good. Um, they do have a mode, like, I think if you're playing the game normally, you can, uh, you have, like, the, the standard, like, red jam in your face, and then you hide, and then it goes away kind of health. But there is a, a mode where you have the, the classic, like, health bar from GoldenEye and, like, body armor and stuff. Um... And it, it was just it was just a lot of fun. It was it was it was good because the game kind of let you play it either stealth like or or just like straight up go in and shoot everybody like and it didn't kind of feel half assed either way. So I just I thought it was a pretty good game. I haven't gone back and to play the single player very much since I beat it back in like what 2010 when it first came out. But I, th I had a good time playing it. So, you know. I think I think that if uh, if people kind of gave it kind of uh, I think that it's worth a I think it's worth a look if you kind of didn't give it a fair shake back when it came out. I mean I know it's kind of hard to live up to the original GoldenEye in the sense that that bit game basically invented console shooters. Well, not invented, but it set the standards for almost every other console shooter to follow. But it it was a good I think the the remake was a good game. And I believe it got ported to uh, everything to the other two consoles afterwards. So, you know, that's pretty cool. And fuck, I hate when they do this. Uh, all right, time to use it out of sight. Uh, when the uh, when the Hyper Goombas charge, they do a lot of damage. So you're just better off having, uh, having Bo uh, hide you during the uh during the the turn so that you can just not take damage at all it's just generally the smarter idea so oh come on again yeah okay all right second first same as the first i'm just gonna use my koopa t whatever i know i'm like one screen away from a heart block but i really don't want to have to 
to deal with this again. So, yeah. Whoosh. I do like the I do like the animations for when all the Goombas miss though, because the 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 normal grounded Goombas kind of go like whoosh, and the 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 pair of Goombas kind of like tumble across the ground, sort of uselessly. I think that's pretty funny. People are asking if I've played Explosion Man. No, I have not. Uh, that's like an indie game, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I've never played that either. I heard it. Oh wait, hold. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally touched the screen and the, the virtual console menu happened. That might happen a lot because generally to do Bo's action commands, you have to tap the stick to the left repeatedly. Most of the time what I do is I take my right hand because I'm right handed and I put it and then use that to mash it instead. Um, and that'll generally lead to me accidentally hitting the, uh, that'll generally lead to me accidentally hitting the, uh, the, 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 the That'll generally lead, me, lead to me accidentally hitting the touch screen a lot. So, uh, I apologize for that in advance. And, uh, these guys. Wonderful. Power bomb time. If I can max out the damage. There we go. Okay, so a power bomb and a multi bounce should take care of everyone here. Ah, damn it. Well, it took care of the two. <laughs> Big. Okay, watch. The curse is gonna increase my defense. These guys are both gonna charge. That's one. That's two. <sighs> figures. Absolutely fucking figures. This <sighs> Every time I, I spend money on this thing. And every time I'm disappointed. I don't even know why I bother. But we killed them all the same. So it's no big deal. And with that. Okay we're like two battles away from leveling up. So that's pretty cool at the very least. Um, and there's also... There's also a, a star piece behind that rock there that I shouldn't forget about. There we go! I always enjoy... I, one thing I do like about the, this game is, is that they do hide secrets all over the place. Uh, actually, hold on. This actually looks like an area where they... Nope! No, there's not. Okay. Um, but there, there, there are secrets all over the place, so it always feels like it's worth your while to go exploring, which I think is important in a game like this, so... Yeah, and one thing about playing this on an HD TV is that you can see the seams where the... Where the... <laughs> where different where the pieces... game falls apart. <laughs> yeah, well, you can see different pieces where the geometry is clearly plastered together, and it's just... I don't know, I find that amusing. But anyway, this is... Wim... This is the Metal Gear Solid section, aka the stealth section that was put into every game because uh, Metal Gear Solid happened to do well. So, yeah. Um, so you don't want to walk... You want to walk slowly to not wake up Clubbas or to alert the UFO things. But also, if they're asleep, you can use uh, Bombette to to blow up... Uh, to blow them up and get easy damage on the Clubbas right away. So, I don't know why they called them Clubbas in this game because their designs are based off of spikes from Mario 3. Um, but I like the term clubba better, so I'm just gonna keep on call calling them that. Um, and yeah, the, now that I think about it, like, the spike things at the end of their sticks are based off of the spikes that they would throw. So I don't know why they, um, I don't know why they just didn't use spikes for this, but whatever. I kind of thought that the, the games lost their charm when, in Sticker Star, uh, they just used spikes instead, because I don't like Spike very much. Why was he a playable character in Mario Party 10? That was the most... Actually, no, uh, Blooper was the most random choice for a playable character in Mario Party 8, but Spike has got to be a pretty close second place, so, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, alright. <laughs> okay, this is an area we can't do anything with until later. Um... This is Tubba Bulba's castle, so uh, this is basically our dungeon for the area. Um, I want though. Uh, yeah, so, uh, but it's really not all that hard, uh, to be perfectly honest. Like, aside from the fact that you're going to be uh, dealing with the clubbas, which do have a pretty decent amount of HP and attack, um, it's not really all that bad. Like, there's not an awful lot of puzzle solving in, in, this, in this area. It's mostly just a matter of finding the key and getting it to the right door. But, yeah, other than that, it's really not all that hard. And this is also, like, one of the only areas in the game where I recommend using Lullaby consistently. Because the 
as you can sort it's actually a pretty good hint that you see them sleeping about all over the place in the castle they're they're the clubbers are lazy fucks so if you uh use lullaby they all fall or sleepy sheeps if you happen to have one uh they will fall asleep really easily so this is one of the only t areas in the game where it's like almost consistently reliable because clubbers are basically the only thing you're going to be fighting in top of Wubba's castle because they're that's just kind of how it is I think that's mostly just because they didn't want you to be fighting very much at all in this area, but the clubbers are worth good experience, and I, I want that, so I'm going to be... And they're not too hard, so I'm going to be going on my way to, to get them. Also, star piece here. boop a doo uh, And I believe there's an apple hidden in one of these. Doop -doo -doo -doo. Nope. Okay. Well, yeah, see... Uh, you And it's weird, because you can go invisible, and then they'll like immediately not see you anymore. And uh, they'll just fall back asleep. It's kind of the most simple of uh, kind of stealth mechanics, where at the very least, Orion, you played Metal Gear Solid. Uh, in that yeah. game, if you get spotted and then hide immediately, the soldiers are on alert for a little while afterwards, right? Mm -hmm. That's how long does it take generally for them to go back to like whatever the the kind of standard low level? Nine, ninety-nine seconds. Ninety-nine seconds. Okay. So, is it generally in your best interest to wait the 99 seconds for them to get depends out? On how, depends on how good you are. Oh. Okay, how about in your experience, then? Uh, depends if how long I need to go. Okay. Before I activate the next cutscene or something. Okay. Like, if it's like if you've got a while to go before the next plot thing, you'll wait, but if you just want to get yeah. a move on. Okay. Yeah. Or if it's just, like, right in the next room over, I can bum rush it. Yeah. Oh, because is Metal Gear Solid one of those things where if you uh, activate a cutscene, uh, the, yeah. the the game will just um, will stop and then like let you talk, <laughs> like hmm. oh you were supposed to go get that snake guy, nah, I don't feel like he's talking guy. to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's a game I really do need to play though. Is the original Metal Gear Solid? Um, you get the Metal Gear Solid collection on PS3. It has one, two, three, and four. And four? Oh wow. Yeah. Um, well, it's a two Blu-ray disc thing, so... Oh, okay. So, like, is um, four all on one disc, then? Yeah, and I believe it also has portable ops on it, too. Okay. Um, how good was the GameCube remake of Metal Gear 1? Metal Twin Gear Solid. Snakes. Twin Snakes. It, it's pretty much the better version, but it's so hard to find they never re-release it, so... Okay. Um, alright. I'll go for the... I'll go for the... What's this called version? The... I'll go for the... Um for the for the, the PlayStation version then whenever I get around to playing the game. It's probably not too high up on my to-do list because I do have other things to do, but I'm assuming we're going to do MGS for Brain Scratch eventually, so... Yeah, maybe. <laughs> They're a very cinema, cinematic slash uh, cutscene heavy game, so... Oh yeah, and Konami's also an asshole, so we'd probably get yeah. content flags for pretty even much... Though, even though they're basically killing off all their franchises. Yeah, so, but especially considering how cutscene heavy all the games are, it's probably really easy for them to auto ID all of it, so it might not actually even be the best idea. Well, it's still something I should play uh, anyway, so. Yeah, um. How good is 2 if when you ignore the fact that Raiden is the main character? Because I know that was, like, the biggest uh, complaint with the, the game was that you play, like, when it first came out, was that you were this random ride and dude instead of snake who was cool uh it's a good game but it's been so long since i've played it i honestly can't tell you i'd have to replay it okay all right i do remember that i i really wow the the lullaby didn't work on that on that club of weird um i could have sworn that it was almost an instant guarantee for like four turn lullaby but whatever um i remember the theme for metal gear solid 2 was really good um that was something I was shocked didn't make it into Brawl soundtrack. Ah, damn it. Ah. Now I feel like a jackass for missing that, that action command. Okay. You see, it's, it's actually, you know, I only, just for a moment there, actually started listening to the music in my, um, in my, in my headphones as opposed to just looking at the screen. And damn, is that distracting, having everything be, like, four seconds behind. Like, fuck. Boop, boop. Okay, there we go. 
Okay, you're doubling my experience points. Wonderful. I believe... You're gonna run out. I believe the curse actually runs out after about two chapters worth of, of buffs, so... Um, it's probably gonna go away relatively soon. I'm actually hoping it, it gets... Uh, it gets used up before I actually get, um, before, before the start of Chapter 4, because I'm gonna need to backtrack to the desert area anyway in order to get, uh, I'm gonna need to backtrack to the desert area in order to get, uh, the Quick Change Badge. So, if I'm gonna be there anyway, I wanna be able to refresh the curse while I'm there, and I don't know what happens if you go to her when you already have a curse, so. Uh, yeah, I'd rather just be safe than sorry, and there we go. These guys are often annoying, but you, they're not too bad to deal with. All you gotta do is turn into bow, and they should be okay. I wrong C button, or like I I press the I press it too late, and I don't do damage, and, and not do damage, and I don't turn into bow quick enough, and then I get screwed. But really, if you get caught, all they do is throw you out. You can go back in pretty fine, and the area really is not all that big either, so. Backtracking back, it's like, I think, I think it's like five rooms wide, um, maybe? Five rooms wide and I think like two floors tall. So it's really not that big of an area to, ah, damn it. It's not really all that big of an area, so you shouldn't really have too much trouble if you do get thrown out because backtracking isn't too, it isn't too big of a deal. And you can sneak past a lot of the clubbers anyway. That's one thing I love about Paper Mario is that there's no random encounters, you can sk you can skip every enemy if you want to, so, you know, it's it it's not ever really that big of a deal if you get thrown out. We have a five pound today from Xanthus's. Hey Ted and Ryan, I'm glad to see the Brain Scratch crew playing games for a great cause. Put this money towards Ganon's Fury because we need the King of Evil to decimate the lands. Have a great rest of your day and God bless. Thank you, dude. And by God bless, you mean Ganondorf, God of Evil, right? Because if so, yeah. then, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Ganon's Fury is a fun mode once you get to, like, level 100. <laughs> uh, and, yeah. Uh, did you did you get the Hyrule Warriors DLC, Ryan? Nope. Nope? Okay. Well, then you haven't played Ganon's Fury mode. Uh, it's it's fun, but the problem is, is that when you first start off, like, Ganon has his own levels. So, like, when you start off at level 1... You do, uh, you are ridiculously weak, and, uh, it takes, in, it takes until you get to, like, level 50 or 70 to, un before you actually, I don't want to fight you, uh, it takes to, like, level 50 or 70 to actually feel like you're, and should be, so, you know, that's just my only, uh, issue with it, and shit, uh, do I have anything that would work well in this situation? Not really, okay, well, Oh, wait a minute, I know what I can do. Um, I can power smash there. How to sight here. I believe that means that I'll... Yeah, then I'll dodge every attack. And then... And then I'll be one away from getting the... the ah, shit. Okay, well... Hmm. Uh... Fuck it. <laughs> okay, I've got a new plan. That's even more flower point cost. Le even less flower point efficient, but whatever. It'll work. Ow. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount multi-bounce on all these guys. Boop, boop. And then have Bombette power bomb them. Completely inefficient, but it works. <laughs> I don't know why. I just I love the animation of all the of all the enemies covered in soot. I just I think it's hilarious. So yeah, um, I need to go back to bow in order to dodge because I believe there's gonna be another UFO dude over here. This guy always gets me. Ah, uh, phew. Okay, he almost did. That guy almost always gets me whenever I play the game on my own. So you know. Um yeah. Okay, so we've got the bridge here. I don't believe anything can happen here. So, yeah, nothing can happen here. Oh, and there's a secret room behind this, uh, behind this clubba, so... It's time to drop the bomb! Boom. Yeah, um... Oh yeah, that's the secret room that leads to the, 
That's the secret room that leads to the way to get the the badge downstairs. I forgot about that. I was thinking there's actually two. Well, no, the other room isn't really a secret, but there's two rooms where you can get kind of hidden goodies. So that's more what I was thinking. Ow! That's more what I was thinking of. Ugh. Okay. Um. Uh, Ryan, what's our donation total at at the moment? Let's see. We're at eight thousand twenty-six pounds and thirty-seven pence. Okay. Cool. Eight, uh, 8,026 pounds, so that's 1,600 to go until, uh, sunshine. We, until sunshine, and that's just, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> um, well, we have to get there first, so. Yeah, but if we do get to it, it's gonna be fun, because, um, it's, um, who was gonna, like, there were gonna be, like, a million different co-coms for that playthrough, right? Was it? Probably. Probably. Yeah. Um... And after we get done with Paper Mario today, you're uh, you're running the well, not running because you're not playing, but you're helping out with the uh, the Mega Man, Mega Man X, yes. Yeah. Uh, and that's Johnny versus Snake, is it? I believe so. Yeah. Also, I love the logic here, where there was that UFO guy uh, chasing me, and then I whack a clubba, and it's just going to let me fight the clubba before grabbing me. <laughs> I love RPGs. They make so much sense. Okay, and they actually fell asleep this time, meaning that uh, I can deal with them and not have to not have to take a shitload of damage. That's the big thing about the clubbas, is that they're not really all that hard to kill, but they do take they do do a lot of damage. And if you mess up on your action commands, especially if you don't have the um, the damage dodge badge are, and I do just because more defense points is always awesome, but they will they do three damage each, so if you're in a battle like this where you're up against four clubbas, you could potentially take, you can, at, at minimum at this point in the game, you're taking four points of damage a turn, and at maximum you can take up to 12, which is a lot, so that's just the big thing about clubbas. They're easy to deal with when you know what to do, but again, dude, come on. What, curse? While he's asleep, dude. That's like that's like the third time you've done that. Just in like the the ah, God, I hate that thing. I really hate that thing. Ah, but yeah, um, if you know what you're doing, you can you can deal with these guys pretty easy. And it's not even like it's too cryptic either, because the game the game shows the the club is asleep a lot. So it's not even like it's uh something that you shouldn't even think of because sleep is a status effect that you can do in the game so it's not even hidden all that it's not even hidden all that uh all that much so it, like you know one thing about rpgs is like oh it's easy if you know what to do and then what to do is some like really obscure kind of uh tactic that requires like the most specific uh the most specific setup imaginable but that's not really the case in this game it's mo it's just you know um Oh, I didn't want to fight this guy yet. Um, it's not the case in this game. It's just you know all you have to do is get them to get them to fall asleep, which is not that hard. So hmm. okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna power smash this guy. Actually, maybe that wasn't the best plan. Whatever. Um, I'm just gonna go with it. Okay, I'm dead if I don't if I don't action command at least one of these attacks. Ah, shit. Shit. Ah, thank god. <laughs> okay, that was too close. Um, I'm gonna use my fried egg. <laughs> yeah, I'm not usually cutting it this close, so... Actually, you know what? What I'm not used to is using uh, Lullaby this much. Uh, this early in the game because again this is something i really only started doing i uh, a few years ago so but you know um when it comes to me in my experience i play paper mario at least once every year so um you know this is that it, it feels like not that long ago to me but using lullaby is something i only started somewhat recently so i'm not quite as in tune with uh planning for it as i am with other stuff so that's just more what I'm thinking about there. Doop, 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 doop. Okay. Uh, and... Okay, good. That battle's done. 
Uh, no new donations, Ryan. Let me check. <laughs> 69 star points. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. Um, nope, no new donations. Ah. Anyway, something that you might not know is that you can push this clock and then you find a secret room. Uh, so a secret passage. Ooh, secret passage. Okay, so... Um, there's actually and there's actually a secret part of the secret room because they've got this little triangle of coins, and then if you climb up onto the bookcase, which must be really fucking big books because they're as big as Mario. Yeah, they, okay, this is where you get the Mega Rush badge. Uh, sorry, it's not last. Last stand might be a different badge. I'm thinking of the Mega Rush badge is the badge that's needed for Danger Mario setups. And actually, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna get the star piece because I skip it almost every run and I feel like doing something different. Um, but the Mega Rush badge is the badge for Danger Mario. And f as a matter of fact, I really wonder what Danger Mario runs do before they get to the point where they get that badge. But basically, it ups your power by four whenever Mario's in peril, which means one HP left. And uh, just in case you guys were unaware, uh, that applies, that doesn't just apply to like your, that applies to just your raw damage total. So it's even that makes jump attacks even more devastating because it whenever you have a badge or whatever that ups your power It ups the power of each individual jump Which means that right now if I had the mega rush badge equipped and I was at 1 HP uh, My my attack total would be 12 damage per per turn with Mario, which is absolutely obnoxious uh, without having to use like and that's without even having to use like any uh, like any other special moves or anything it's just it is absolutely insane how much damage you can do with uh, with danger Mario's setup so I I'm actually really curious as to how as to how danger Mario's uh, strategies work early in the game not that it's ever really all that hard early in the game so you could do low low health runs without too much of a problem but i just i think it's very interesting and i think a a no health upgrade run of paper mario would be fun for me to try one time especially considering that i do relatively vanilla playthroughs most of the time but anyway i wanted to I actually i did want to backtrack um here because i did want to backtrack for that to explain danger mario here because we're in a room with tubba blubba in it now and if you get into a fight with him, he is invincible, and there is literally nothing you can do to him. So just run a- ah, shit, I did not want to wake him up. Um, so if you do get into a fight with Tubble Blubba in that hallway, just- and you know what, I don't- I do not trust myself in this. I do not trust myself in this area. So I'm just going to- I'm going to equip the slow, slow go badge. Um, but just so you guys know, if you do um, run into Tubble Blubba in that hallway, just run away, and then try to either leave the area- or uh, leave the area or just use bow to hide because yeah you you just you straight up cannot beat him until you get uh to a later point in the game so yeah and i don't need that anymore i don't even think the badge we got was really even all that good what did we i don't even remember what we got and we got it like 30 seconds ago man i'm a dipshit okay Oh, no, we got the castle key, which we needed to progress. Okay, yeah. And, okay, we're at the very end. Well, we're not at the very end of the chapter, but we're nearing the end of the chapter. But it's not actually the way you expect, because most of the time in these, in the, um, in Paper Mario, when you see a save block and a heart block right next to each other, you're starting to think, oh, it's boss time. But the this game actually does things a little bit differently, because, um, yeah, this is Tubble Blubba's bedroom, and this, oh, shit, I forgot that this happens. Um, it's actually, uh, one thing that's really weird is I didn't know that the original Paper Mario supported the, uh, the rumble, uh, pack. So it's very weird having my controller rumble when I'm playing this game because most of the time I play it on my N64 because my card still works and I like being authentic if I can be. So it is, and like I've, I've just, I've played my, my, I played this game throughout my entire life without rumble. So it's really weird having it shake when like he's walking around and stuff. But anyway, this is Yaki. Yeah, I get it. So you don't look like Master Tubba Blub at all. That means you've come to steal me. The magical key that unlocks the door to Windy Mill at the foot of the Gusty Gulch. And four of them are your goal is to find out if there's a secret inside that Windy Mill. Uh, no. 
you're a terrible liar. <laughs> this game still has some, still has some pretty funny, uh, still has some pretty funny lines, I think. Especially if you go out of your way for optional stuff. But anyway, this is the Escape from Tumble Blubba music, which is, I think, one of the best tracks in the game. And it's a shame that it only plays once. <laughs> It always feels like that, that in, in a lot of games where the best music tracks are the ones that only play, like, for 30 seconds, or in this case, like, 5 minutes, and you never hear ever again. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, the there was, I think, some, some lag there, because that was a relatively graphics-intensive section. But hold on a moment, I need to check if we've actually got drop frames going on. Nope, we're still good. Okay, let's keep on going. Um, but yeah, um, this section is um, if you, again, if you if Tubba Blubba catches up to you, uh, you will be in a fight with him, and you cannot win the fight. So just leave, uh, run away. Um, you do end up getting a head start on him uh, after you get out of the castle, though, because uh, as we'll see very short. <laughs> I love that you can see his little UFO guys just trapped under the rubble there. But as we see here, a whole bunch of boos are coming to bar the door. So um, I I don't remember if you can if Tubba Blubble can catch up with you after this point, or if he won't. I, I've never gone back to check, uh, thankfully. But he will keep. Ch uh, I'm pretty sure he will keep on chasing you eventually, um, because I know that these these boos just don't look very like very good support. So. Um, I just keep on going left and try to ignore enemies if I can. Um, I also save because that's just generally a good thing to do, but yeah. yeah. Saving is always a good idea. Well, unless if you're in a situation where if you save the game, you can lock yourself out of uh, the rest of it. Like Twilight, Prin Twilight Princess did that, right? Where if you saved at the wrong point, you were just boned. That was, that was before a patch, but yeah. Well, the closest thing to a patch that Nintendo did, like an early version of the game, was it? Yeah. Okay, but, yeah, um, what was I going to say? Um, but yeah, I don't remember if Tubble Blubbuck will be able to catch up with you eventually, but I'm not going to take that risk and dilly-dally, so, yeah, um, where is, yeah, okay, so, um, yeah, the Gusty, the Gusty Gulch area is really not all that, that, that big anyway, and I don't really mind the, the, the backtracking either because one this great music is playing and two like it's just a high t it's a high stakes situation anyway so yeah um also just in case you guys want to know um these goombas they're they're not worth fighting um there's one goomba in this in this room there's i think two goombas in this room and i believe three goombas in the next room and they, the 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 signs just say like i we said to keep out like hold on what does this one say absolutely no entry allowed and i believe if we just walk in here yep we've got oh my gosh tubba blubba's heart that means that tubba blubba is a heartless but uh, there's also his heart still here and he can get it back so that means that bowser is tubba blubba's nobody and this 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 game's plot's confusing <laughs> um but yeah so the 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 the, the secret to tubba blubba being invincible quote unquote is that he's a heartless, so uh, if we beat up his heart, then we can take care of Tubble Blubba or something. Uh, he is pretty dangerous, mostly just because he does a lot of damage for this point in the game. He does like six damage. Um, AU Lady Ghost, so yeah, so he does charge though, like he'll spend most of his turns charging. So, uh, that's actually really not all that hard to avoid, because all you have to do is, uh, put ball, is just use Bo's, uh, out of sight maneuver, and then he's pretty much, uh, he's pretty much a cakewalk. So save some, uh, save some FP for Bo, I think is just the, the best kind of, ex the best kind of advice I can give. And for the longest time, I didn't notice that the, that the graphics for the little things that he sense towards you is uh like smaller versions of the heart i thought that they were like just little like i didn't even know what they were but i don't know i just that's pretty cool that's cool to me i think we have a one pound donation from baby rosalina baby rosalina for smash no no <laughs> i i still can't decide what's stupid or baby rosalina or pink gold peach i really both can't. are both are incredibly stupid yeah but 
I would say Pink Gold Peach is stupider, but then again, Baby Rosalina is also goes against canon, so... Up, like there is canon in Mario, but like... Whatever. She's not a princess when she's a baby, but whatever. Stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Okay. I actually think he's more dangerous when he's just coming out to to attack you as opposed to when he's charging because the charge is incredibly telegraphed and it's basically just hey use bow kind of like when he's uh when you're fighting hyper goombas um but uh and his normal attack i have a hard time trying to uh use the guard against it so yeah i think he's more dangerous when he's doing his normal attack but other than that he's really not that hard of a boss really um it's just a matter of using bow like, keeping her out. That's the only secret to this boss. Uh, and... Oh, well, I guess the other thing is is that you can't really use hammer attacks on him at all, I believe. Because he's technically uh, in a raised position. So, like, I... You know, there's, there's that, I suppose. Actually, hold on. I want to try something. I believe if I get him down to four health, he's going to, like, say that he has to leave. Okay. I've never actually got... He, he runs away before you actually get him down to... To his lowest possible health so I wonder what happens if you like power bounce or something and uh, get him down to minimum health before that that's just something I've always been curious about but yeah I'm gonna skip these guys because they're they're not really worth my time uh damn it yeah I'm running away <laughs> I do not need to fight you guys <laughs> okay um doop 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 okay so let's yeah, there's just... You know what, I'll fight you, just for shits and giggles. If you... Oh, yeah, that's another thing I forgot to mention. If you do do a uh, a, a, a super jump in the air while you and you land on an enemy that way, you do do more damage with your attack on your first strike. That's pretty cool, I think. Um, and I... Oh, a, a drive shroom. That's that's great. I'm, I, I really needed that. Yeah, I'm just going to use that now to save my inventory space. <laughs> okay, let's keep on going. Um... And if you're... Up <laughs> oh, man. What, that ha what happened? Uh, Goombario got stuck on the sprint graphic. <laughs> <laughs> the partners sometimes act a little bit kind of weird. Uh, this happens in both games. Uh, both Paper Mario games. Um, but, yeah. Okay. So, Tubble Blubba, when he's not invincible, is not hard. He's got 10 HP. <laughs> Which is, yeah, that's that's pretty pathetic, honestly. He does do four damage, which is an okay amount, but like, like, it, it's four HP. That's that's, I mean, ten HP. That's pathetic. Uh, like starting next chapter, you're gonna be fighting nor, well, maybe chapter five. Really soon, you're gonna be fighting enemies that have normal enemies that have more HP than him. So the real boss fight is against Tubble Bubba's heart. Against Tubble Bubba himself is just mostly a joke. And I'm actually glad I fought that Goomba because it got me up to full health. I mean, so hold on a moment. Uh, 15, 20, 25, 10, 15, 20, 6, 9, 12. Okay, I want to upgrade badge points. Awesome. So yeah. So yeah, it turns that turns out that Double Blubba is actually a wimp. <laughs> also, he's regurgitating all the ghosts he ate. Ew. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm actually a really sensitive guy trapped in a huge body. I don't want to be invincible anymore if it means I have to fight guys like you. <laughs> oh man. So yeah. So it's so it turns out that. Everybody used to scare him, and then he ended up getting, he ended up getting his revenge or whatnot. So there's some sort of lesson about bullying in there, I, I guess. But I don't, I don't really give a shit. <laughs> so let's just keep on, let's just keep on going with the plot, shall we? So now we get the Star Spirit, even though she should have just given it to us in the first place because, like, we're trying to save the world here. But you know, whatever. Um. Yeah, but uh, with that, we we're just about to finish off Chapter 3, and we get Scholar, which is actually, I think design-wise, my favorite uh, Star Spirit in the game. And he also has my favorite Star Spirit power in the game, too, so... Which is? Uh, Star Storm, which does 7 damage to every enemy on screen, regardless of defense. 
So, yeah, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> and it's going to be very useful in Chapter 4 because there's most of the enemies in that chapter have exactly 7 health. Which I know that they did on purpose. So, yeah, so... Yeah, end of chapter. And now I believe we've got another peach section. And I... Oh, I remember. This one's actually one of the shortest peach sections in the game, uh, thankfully. Um, Hooray. Yeah. Because um, I know she's your favorite character, Ryan. <laughs> this is actually... They actually make Peach's hair more orange than blonde in this one. Which is weird because she had been blonde for a while. But she was... They're going with the more redheaded kind of color for this game. Which was, I believe, her hairstyle in the original Super Mario Brothers. It's probably just a sprite. Uh, it's probably just a sprite. Uh, um mistake but you know there's that anyway you think that bowser would figure out the secret passage by now especially since it's literally having literally happening right behind him but you know whatever so <laughs> i love bowser he's one of my rpg bowser's one of my favorite video game characters well he's so stupid <laughs> he's so stupid but he's also full of himself um anyway yeah this is one of my favorite parts of the game because Bowser is in a moment of quote unquote genius going to ask Princess Peach what Mario hates and then use that against that information against him. So what does Mario hate the most? Uh, mushrooms. He really hates those mushrooms. And oh, Thunder Age. Yeah, he totally hates those. Oh, I, I picked Pokemon Mistake. Oh well, that's not too bad. Uh, I, I think the last one's like a Super Soda. I don't like even using those anyway. So, yeah, awesome. Yeah, so, yeah, that peach section is, is over. The Normally, they're a little bit longer because there's some sort of minigame that we have to do, but in this instance, all you have to do is pick those things, and that, they'll actually impact the rest of the chapter. So, you know, that's cool, I, I think. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, that's probably the, the, the shortest peach section of the game. So, you know, there we go. And we cut back to, like three seconds later are back on Mario's terms. So, yeah, we have... Uh-oh. Bowser's life force is getting stronger, Ryan. Do we care? Nope. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So now he's going back to Starhaven, and we're continuing on with our quest. Actually, yeah, we're still at full health. Okay. So if you need to, you can go back into Boo's Mansion and uh, get supplies, but... Excuse me. Uh, I'm good at this game, so I don't need to. <laughs> so immediately on to Chapter 4? Uh, well, I, we have to backtrack, but we have to backtrack back to Toad, uh, Toad Town, but yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on, we got the... We got the Strange Leaf. Yes. Strange. There's no... I, I don't know what's strange about it, but it's definitely one strange leaf there. Yep. Is it April 20th? Because I'm going to blaze it. <laughs> 420 plays the cat it. Okay, uh, let's get Goombario out. Actually, hold on. Let's, uh, let's see. Hold on. I want to look at my badges. I don't need multi... No, actually. Oh, yeah, because I got more badges and I want to do stuff with them. I'm going to get Power Bounce back on and... Uh, doop, 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 doop. Uh, um, uh, how about close? Close call? Yeah, okay. Close call. Okay, so, yep. Yeah. Ah, Junior Troopa, I love this guy. <laughs> I love how it's, um, I love, shut up! I, I love, I love his dialogue in this area, because, like, I think, yeah, it's just like, don't think, uh, hold on. More power, I believe he starts flying now? Yeah, he starts flying. Uh, so, haha, yeah. So, let's see. Um, I, it's just, I love how he gets, he's so happy to find somebody else in the forest, and then he, he's like, oh wait, it's Mario, I need to beat him up. So, yeah, I just, I love this guy. Um, I believe Paracarry is the best character to use in this boss fight because uh, he's got Shell Shock, which Shell Shot, which is the most damage, the, the highest damage move we can use against, uh, the highest damage move a partner can use against an, a, a floating enemy. So that's why he's the best choice for this one. Um, what are you again? Uh, uh, you know, Junior Troopa, that guy we fought at the very beginning of the game. <laughs> Ooh. Um. Uh. I don't know. 
Or if I, I can see. Well, I haven't used Power Bounce very much. Let's see if we can get a good combo going. Six, seven, eight. Eight! That's actually not that bad. Okay. Um. Yeah, this boss fight is actually pretty easy, all things considered. Um. He does he does a decent amount of damage, but really in a you should be at full health in this at this point because you're uh, you just finished a chapter and you've got two attacks per turn where he's only got one. It's not that bad. You just if you just spam your special moves, you should be fine. And actually, since he's got exactly seven health left, I'm gonna show off Star Storm because it's pretty awesome. Whoosh! Bonk. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, I just, I, lo I love, I love these boss fights. And it's actually a shame that it's very hard to find a good rip of Junior Troopa's uh, themes. They're, they're really great. Okay, so anyway, I believe if we go out this way, we, it should take us to the beginning of the forest. Nope, it took us deeper into the forest. It's actually really easy to get out of here, because all I have to do is find the wrong, like a quote-unquote wrong exit. And then you're just taken back to the very beginning, which you can just use to get out. <laughs> so, actually, Junior Troopa had to really try hard to get lost in the forest by taking the quote-unquote right path every single time. <laughs> I, I just, I find this that funny. And, oh, look at that! We've got wacky music going on! Is there a star? I could have sworn there was a star, a star piece hidden in that tree. In that tree. So, anyway, we've got to give a letter to Feisty to get another, uh... What's it called? To get another uh, star piece. So he gets he gets all scared. Star piece. Get. Woo. And, okay, so hold on. Oh, no. Oh, I was going to actually go cooking for shit, but I forgot that the... the, the I forgot that the shy guy stole all... Uh, steal everybody's shit at the beginning of this chapter. Oh, yeah, we've got a lot of stuff to do uh, in between chapters at this point. Um... Um, yeah, because this is actually the point where we get the quick change badge, I just remembered. So, um, first things first, we're gonna, we're gonna heal, because that's important. And then we're gonna save, because that's also important. And then, oh, wait, hold on. It's impossible to, I can, what are you talking about? I can, I can deal with that. I deal with my brothers jumping all over me in bed. This is nothing. Um, so, yeah. We, so... Have, we have a 10 pound donation from Nobutron. Salutations, here's a little donation you could put towards Ganon's Fury. Oh, and Ryan, have you seen the movie Red Line by Studio Madhouse? It's amazing. No, I haven't, but I mean to. Uh, what, do you know what it's about? No. Okay. <laughs> but I hear it's really good, so. Okay, is it, that a new movie or an old movie? Uh, it came out like a year and a half ago, I think. Okay, because I remember the... I remember the, the name, but I don't remember much else, so. Actually, yeah. hold on a moment. If you go to Dry Dry Desert, all they say is to... to all they say is to... Uh, power is to super jump three times oh you don't even have to go back awesome that cuts down on the significant amount of backtracking i was about to do so okay good i just i always do it just to read the dialogue but okay now we've got the quick change bad which means i need four i need four. i don't actually think there's very many spiky enemies in the upcoming area so i'll get rid of that and um do Power Smash is a little bit redundant. Okay, so now we can put on... Where the hell is it? Quick Change, here it is. Okay. So now we can so now we can switch party members at will, uh, dramatically increasing our, uh, our versatility in battles. That is a badge I almost always have equipped, and it is one of the best in the game. So, yeah. Uh, get that ASAP, because it's good. It's good, man. Okay, so... Okay, yeah, so, I, I don't know, well, I, I should have, hold on, how many star pieces do I have? I've got, I've got 16, that's plenty. Uh, we should have enough star pieces, uh, to get the Zap Tap badge, which is a pretty important badge, so, um, it's definitely something we're gonna want for the anti-guy fight, which we're actually gonna be doing pretty soon, actually, I forgot. Okay, so the famous Merlot, okay, so, let's see, um, boo boo boos oh, I can get Zap Tap, and the badge points you want is four. Okay, so I can get Zap Tap and let's... Oh, I can also get Pretty Lucky. That's that's cool. Um, the badge points you'll need for three. Yeah, okay, there we go. So, no. Awesome. So, there we go. We've got plenty of, we've got plenty of uh, badges to make the upcoming fights easier. There is a... Uh, if you go back and watch the Brain Scratch playthrough of the original Play Paper Mario... 
Uh, when you go to fight Anti-Guy, there's a really easy way to do it where you just buy, like, a million stone caps and then you just let Bo go to town on him. But I don't want to do that because that's boring to watch and takes forever. So we're going to do it a more legit way this time. So, you know, do that's you have cool. a strategy in mind? Uh, equip Zap Tap and hope for the best. <laughs> um, Joy. Yeah, that's that, that's all I got. Um, he's, re he's not that bad when you know what to do. But yeah, um, I'll just have to look at my I'll just have to look at my uh, at my badge layout and uh, prepare. Uh, I'll probably I'll come up with a plan later. Uh, be but in the meantime, we do actually have um, more uh, Toad Town tunnels to explore. So you should. I always recommend doing that as soon as you can because it just make uh, you unlock a lot of uh, a lot of quick warps to places. And oh, sweet! I actually managed to do the the super jump on him right away. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, when the Koopas are kind of grinning like that, you really want to make sure to. Uh, you really want to make sure to flip them over because then they'll do like a spinny move and that's annoying so um yeah i believe they also get themselves back on their feet quickly so that's annoying too but if you have both goombario and <coughs> excuse me if you have both goombario and mario uh, out you can deal with these guys with literally no problem so uh yeah um I mean, it's it's time-consuming because you just got to do your normal attack over and over again, but you're not going to take any damage, and you're not going to have to use any flower points. So, you know, it's just the, the best way to do it. Um, and I don't think it's any more time-consuming than just killing one or the other. Like, so, yeah, I just... I'm going to do it this way because it's the way I like to do it, man. <laughs> uh, Ryan, was that 10-pound donation the last one? Yes. Okay, uh, so... How much is uh, is Ganon's Fury yet at the moment? Uh, let me check. It is at 189 out of 500. 189 out of 500. So it's actually going pretty okay at this point. That's it's it's getting there. Yeah. Um, we're almost halfway. So, uh, it'd be I think it'd be really cool to get halfway. Um, halfway by the end of Paper Mario. I think would be awesome. So, um, you know, keep donating to that because that's something that I would really love to show off. Because uh, showing off uh, Gain and Sphere also me. Come on, again! Curse. Yep, they're both flipped over. Come on. Uh, every time. Every single time. Uh, but, yeah. Um, uh, sh showing off Gain and Sphere means I show off another mode as well in that game and if you play Hyrule Warriors a lot I think you know what mode I'm talking about so that would be awesome if I could show off that mode because um, it's pretty hilarious so I mean it's frustrating if you're actually trying to get all the medals in that other mode but it's hilarious so uh, I really want to get a chance to show that mode off for you guys so yeah uh, you should donate to Ganon's Fury um, and I can show off yeah I can just show off the other extra mode that you get after you complete Ganon's Fury, so yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, you want to take care of the, uh, you want to take care of the 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 Dark Koopas here because all things considered, they are not hard, and also uh, you get uh, a quick travel to. Uh, I really do not want to deal with them the legitimate way. Um, wait a minute, I don't have to deal with them the legitimate way. <laughs> I can use Star Storm, which is good. Um, yeah, that should do plenty of damage on them. And I believe they have, I believe they have two defense, so I can just power shell, and then they're all dead. Yeah, that was easy. Okay, that's good. But um, you get all—they're not hard, and you get a lot of experience for going up against them at this point in the game, so. And on top of that, if you ever need to get a, a life shroom, just uh, just in case, you can just quick travel to, uh, to Boo's Mansion. Oh, and there's a heart block right there, so you even get a free heal right after, so. Hooray. Yeah, there's really no need, reason not to. So, yeah, uh, I just, I can't remember what else is on the other side of this area, although... Oh, wait, hold on, there's this, um, there's this, uh, actually, 
I'm actually really curious because I want to know what the uh, power block, what the the block says, the super block says, if you try to get it when you have a full party member, a party of. I want to know what the super block says if you have a full party. You have no member you can upgrade now. Oh, that was boring. Okay, well, there's a super block there that's really easy to get later in the game. So, uh, yeah, it's you can do that just as well later at, after chapter four but i think it's worth your while to do it now because it's uh it's just it's it's not too hard and you can get it easy so uh yeah it's not too hard and you can get it really easily so it's just yeah it's a good idea so hold on i'm gonna go to the toad's house again because even though we got a full heal i do need more star power if i'm gonna want to fight anti-guy because i'm probably gonna want to try oh wait shrink stomp oh I, I completely forgot about that shrink stomp uh, somebody recommended i use it in the uh in the fight so i'm gonna try to use status affecting moves and see how well that works out for me but yeah, yeah. um uh ryan uh how how long has our call been going it's been going for an hour 45 okay so yeah um all right so that shouldn't be too bad um we, ch uh, chapter four is not that long either um good because it's really storming here so if my power goes out and i drop we'll get someone in here really quick oh okay because i could actually i could actually hear the uh the the, the thunder the on that one yeah it was that was pretty loud um yeah sorry actually do you um if you're really worried about it do you think you should uh get someone in here uh now um it's fine for now but i'll have someone on standby okay actually hold on i've never actually seen if Oh no, you can't jump on top of those uh, those boxes. Oh, this is Rip Cheeto. He's a jackass. Don't talk to him. Um, although he is the guy you have to talk to if you want. Um, he's the guy you have to talk to if you want to. Um, he's the guy you have to talk to if you want to make Danger Mario even more efficient because uh, he's he actually makes it so. Uh, he actually makes it so that you can. Um, what's it called? He makes it so that you can have your health be 5 HP as opposed to just, uh, as a, at minimum, as opposed to 10. So, just keep that in mind if you want to have the absolute minimum HP possible. Um, but anyway, we have Bo. Um, so, in order to get to the next area, and you can find out hints to this if you talk to people around town. Oh, the, the shy guy will walk in. Oh no, it's Mario. And then he'll run away. Uh, oh, it's been years since I've seen that animation. Um, but you just have to wait in there. Um, so what you need to do is, um, I'm just going to exit and re-enter uh, re the area just for, to make it easier on myself. But anyway, um, you need to make Bo have you turn invisible, and then the shy guy will walk in and he'll be all like, uh, whatever, like, music note, music note, music note, music note, and then he'll jump through, and then you can go to chapter four, shy guy's toy box. Woo! Do, 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 do. Okay. Thank, thankfully, this shouldn't take too long. Oh no, it's 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 one of the the shorter and easier chapters in the game. But hold on, first things first, I'm I'm saving, <laughs> um, because uh, anti guy is in the next room and we're gonna fight that asshole. Um. Uh oh, there's a a normal shy guy there. I actually don't want to fight him yet. Okay, so... Oh, wait. Hold on. Get away from that treasure chest pal. It's mine. See? Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna fight you just yet. Good. You're a smart boy. Okay, so hold on. Let's look at the badges I have equipped and make the... Well, okay. I want to keep da damage, dodge, and quick change up. That is super important. But apparently Shrink Stomp works on them. Uh, uh, I'm gonna keep pretty lucky on... Well, no. Actually, I want to have Zap Tap on, actually. So, Damage Dodge, Quick Change, Shrink Stomp, and, um, Shrink Stomp, and Zap Tap. So, let's, okay, let, what do you want? Get away from the treasure chest. Okay, let's, let's fight. Uh, yeah. So, anyway, let's, let's get this, let's get this started. If you want to get what's in the, tr uh, in the treasure chest without fighting him, all you have to do is give him Levin Candy, which you can do by, um, which you, exploring the room well no you get it by uh, mixing uh mixing lemon candy you get by mixing cake mix and a lemon 
So... Uh, uh, I thought it was something you found in here, my bad. Yeah, no, you get that by mixing a uh, cake mix and a lemon. I do think somebody tells you that his favorite candy is lemon candy, but if you give that to him, he'll just let you have what's in the treasure chest. So, he's hard because his max, max HP is 50 and his attack power is 10, meaning that he's about as ha he's even harder than he is on the uh, in the final boss. Not the final boss. He's even harder than the boss of this area, basically. But we're going to do Shrink Stomp and see if that even does anything. Yeah, oh, it does. He's he shrunk. His attack power is half of normal. So yeah. So if you so if you okay. So if you do do that, his attack is relatively manageable. Uh, but okay, I'm gonna have Goombario charge because I believe that's the best way to do damage against him at this point. Oh shit! Ow! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Okay. Um. Doop. Doop. Okay, um, that did a decent amount of damage. Okay, we're gonna Shrink Stomp him again. <laughs> boop. And boop. Okay, so two turns. Oh, he gets... Oh, God. Um... Oh, God. Oh, God, oh, God. This is not going well. Oh, Repel Gel! I forgot that I even had this. Oh, God, thank... Oh, oh thank goodness. Oh, that's gonna make this a lot easier. Okay, um... No, I don't... Is, need... this, is this the only one you have to fight? Uh, uh right now, yeah. I forgot. When's the other ones? The other ones, uh, the other ones are in Chapter 8. <laughs> so, uh, okay. I'm going to need to look up a strategy for Triple Anti, guys, since I completely forgot about how, how ridiculous this battle was. I might actually use one of my, my whack a bumps here. Uh, <laughs> doop. Okay, there we go. I'm not going to bother Shrink Stomping him while I have... Uh, while I have the... Uh, while I have the, the Repel Gel equipped, because that's just a waste of flower points. And shit, he's back. Okay, um... Um... Okay, Bo. Um... Okay, hold on, if I smack him now... Hold on, I just... I gotta... Um, hold on, I'm just trying to think. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Okay, if I... It's... Okay, so right now it's not possible for me to do more than... Uh, 15 damage to him. So actually, what I'm gonna do is um, 11. No, uh, I just I need to heal. I think is the, the most important thing. I need to heal. So uh, I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna eat this attack. I should be able. I'm actually pretty good at. Okay, so hold on. This is. I think I've got a plan. It just requires me okay if he does this acrobatic attack okay good we're we're set we've got this so Hooray. yeah so all i gotta do is smack him boop 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 uh and he's just one normal attack away from getting defeated so uh boop 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 yes awesome i didn't even have to use that many uh that many items ah oh, thank god curse okay you see, the, uh, the curse doubled the amount of star points I got from fighting the anti guy. So you know, like it, the the curse the curse giveth and it taketh away, I suppose. And for that we get the power plus badge, which is actually pretty decent. Um, but it's it's it uses up so much badge points that I generally don't equip it in a standard run. And shit, I've got not nearly enough. Uh, I've got not nearly enough. Uh, I've got not nearly enough. Um, Oh, wait, hold on a moment. I can just, um, Starstorm these guys, and then it'll be fine, and then I'll level up. And so, okay, yeah, never mind. We're good. We don't even have to backtrack or nothing. Awesome. Okay, yeah, so that was the anti-guy fight. Uh, that's how I get when I'm actually being challenged by something in Paper Mario, which has not happened in quite some time. Most of the time, I either skip the fight entirely or just cheese past it. So, yeah, now you know what it's like to do that battle legitimately. Um... Okay, so... Oh, Groove Guys. These guys are annoying, too. Um, boo, doo. They are easy to get a to get a jump on. Ah! Get a jump on them! Because I'm using the, the, the... I'm using the super jump on the Groove Guys. <laughs> oh, boy. I love... I, I, I love jokes. Um, we know. Yeah, but my jokes would probably be better than these guys' jokes, at the very least. Right? Right? Eh... <laughs> oh man oh yeah i can equip normal badges now uh, i should probably do that um but anyway um yeah but uh the only the annoying thing about those guys is if you let them live 
they will start spawning more of them. They'll, like, bring reinforcements, and that's a pain, so. If you don't want to deal with that, then all you really need to do is, um, if you don't want to deal with that, then you can just, then focus on those guys first. Uh, do 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 power bounce, and actually, uh, yeah, I'll do, uh, Ah, God, I'm close call. What not? Why not? Okay. So anyway, uh, this room, I believe we get a, quite a few things that we need in order to actually explore the area more. Um, you've got the calculator, which we need in order to get the bad shot back. Um, and I believe this is also... No, actually, this is not where we uh, get the... Um, this is not also where we get the, uh, the key. I believe the key is on... The storeroom key is on the other side of the area. Um, I believe, but we, I believe we get the, do we get anything other than the calculator in here? I know this is the room where you can get cake mix, which is important for a lot of different things you want to, to cook in the game. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to get a, a batch. Ah, there we go. Um, and do, 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 jump and jump. Thankfully, shy guys are not very hard enemies, especially considering the fact that you were dealing with, um, with uh with clubbas in the last area which again aren't too bad but definitely do a lot more damage than than shy guys because even on shy guys do like can only do three damage uh if they get uh you with their acrobatic attack which i think is even easier to dodge than their uh than their normal attack because it's way more telegraphed like hold on here uh hold on there well i thanks curse i guess but i actually kind of wanted to show off an attack for once um Oh, well, whatever. I'll take a good thing while it lasts. But, okay, so when the Shy Guys are about to do their acrobatic attack, they kind of go, like, they make, a, like, a sound effect and they do a pose. And it goes really slowly, so it's really easy to dodge. Whereas when they do their normal attack, they they go a lot quicker. So it's just, I find it a lot easier to to block their, their acrobatic attack as opposed to their normal attack their normal attack only does two damage so if you've got damage dodge equipped you're not taking anything from that attack and you're only taking one if you've got the uh if you if you go up against their their acrobatic attack so they're really not all that bad and oh look it's it's kami koopa Wonderful. well we have a 10 pound donation from kiran hi guys loving the run and looking forward to the rest put this towards iwata as trainer fuck bomb <laughs> Um, well, good news for you, uh, Iran. I believe Awada's, it, Awada is leading by, I think, at least 120 points, uh, pounds. Uh, do you happen to know the, the, the standings on that, Ryan? Trainer name Iwata is now taking the lead with 397 compared to Bomb's 391. Wait, Bomb got to 391? When the hell did that yeah. happen? Did, I, I have no idea. Did When did Bomb make a comeback? No, that's wrong. No, that is... Well, Iwata's leading, so... Iwata's leading, leading, but Iwata was also leading by, like, a good 100 pounds last time I checked. So, like, what the fuck, guys? Seriously. What the hell? <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. That, I think, was a good e explanation. Like, uh, it is a pretty quick attack. It's not that hard to, to dodge, but it's harder to dodge than their acrobatic attack, is more what I meant. So, yeah. The area is pretty is is pretty simple, all things considered. So uh, apparently we've got a 170 pound donation for uh, bomb yesterday. Oh, okay, that was it. Why? Uh, Why? <laughs> That's just my question. Why? Oh, these guys. Um, these are fly guys, I believe. Ah. Uh, okay, so fly guys are actually special in that I believe they're the only type. Oh, they're sky guys. Sorry, fly guys are the ones with the with the uh, fly guys are the ones with the the propellers on their heads uh, that aren't actually in this game um but they're floating you can attack their balloons to get them to the ground but i don't actually recommend doing that because unlike uh targeting a paragoomba uh that it doesn't do damage to them if you attack their balloons so most of the time i just recommend using airborne characters when dealing with them it's not really worth it to try to go out of your way to do um it's not really worth it to go out of your way to to try to knock their balloons down so yeah um okay so in here there are a lot of hidden items in in shy guys toy box so it is worth your time to explore uh, lots of hidden lots of hidden stuff in here like g really good items too 
uh, lots of star pieces. Um, it's just, it's worth your time to go exploring. And, yeah, it's, Sky Guy's Toy Box is probably one of my favorite areas in the game. Uh, partially because it's uh, one of the very few areas that doesn't have a very stereotypical kind of Mario motif. Because, like, we've gotten our spooky level, our, our, our spooky level, level, our desert level. You know, we've gotten all that, but... We don't have very stuff that's very. We don't have a lot of stuff that's Shy Guy's Toy Box. So I, I believe like the main inspiration for Shy Guy's Toy Box is, uh, what's it called? Is Yoshi's Island because there is a lot of very similar design aesthetics to Yoshi's Island in Shy Guy's Toy Box. Um, but you know, uh, it's it is very much its own thing, and I just it's visually speaking, it's one of my very favorite chapters in the game. I think also gameplay wise too, because um, I I just like any area that kind of emphasizes how much of a like a good natured hero Mario is, even if he is kind of a dick. Um, <laughs> um, and you know, you do spend most of this uh, chapter helping out the people of Toad Town, so. I just, I enjoy that aspect of, uh, of the, the, the chapter a lot, too. Um, so now that we have the storehouse key, uh, we have to go give that to the store manager over here. Um, oh wait, I went, I went in the wrong building. Uh, I believe those are the toads you can talk to to get the hint about where to go to get the Shy, the shy Guys toy box, but, okay, you give the, the key to the, you give the key to the storeroom manager, uh, the store manager, I should say. Um... And then you can take everything that's inside, uh, and that includes uh, that includes a couple of good items and a dizzy dial. But it also includes the toy train, which you need to get past, uh, which you need to uh, progress. Shit. Yeah, which you need to progress. Uh, crap! I'm gonna end up having to throw something away. I'm gonna throw away the honey star because that's not really needed at this point. Um, and I'm gonna okay. It's time to store some stuff. Uh, let's check. Um, I don't need the cake mix right away. Um, I don't need the strange leaf. Um, I definitely don't need the bolt room. Uh, yeah, that looks good. Um, I do actually want to keep the, the snowman doll on me, though. Because that's, uh, that's going to be useful against the pyro guys that we'll be facing off with later, so. Yeah, so anyway... This, okay, so now we're coming up to points where Ted got stuck in Paper Mario uh, Part 3. Um, when I was first playing the game, you got the toy train, and I went inside the, sh the, the toy box and tried to give it to the train station, because they don't have a train. But, what you're supposed to do is actually drop it in like this. Which makes no sense, because we shrink when we go in here, but the train doesn't, but only when we drop it in this way, whatever. Um... But yeah, it took me forever to figure out how to do that when I was playing as a kid. But once you do that, you can go to the pink section. So, yeah. Um, okay, let's get a move on. Uh, I said... Okay, so they're just very happy about having a train. Okay, we want to go to the pink station. Uh, there's four stations in total, although... The last station, the red station, you really only use, like, once. It's just basically there to get you to the final boss. Or, the, uh, the final boss of the chapter, I should say. So, it's not used very much. Um, each station basically is its own, like, little mini area, and you spend a lot of time in... Uh, you spend a lot of time in each one. You, like, you generally go in and out a lot, so there is a fair bit of backtracking. But there you get the mailbag. I have a feeling that they kind of had something planned in mind for it, for the mailbag. Like, they wanted to, um, oh, I shouldn't even bother going left yet because I need the cookbook before I can even get past a uh, gourmet guy. So, I need to go this way. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so there isn't even really, like, like they, most of the other stuff, like, you find, oh, I forgot to give the calculator back to Ralph, too. Um, I'll do that next time I go out of the, out of the town. Um, but anyway, um, you get a, the, you find the mail back there, and you just get a, shy, a, a uh, you get, just get a star piece for giving it back. And, since it's just in a random chest there, I have a feeling that maybe they had something different planned for it. Maybe, I'm not sure. It's just, it's kind of, it's kind of weird the way that they did it, so. Um, hmm. I want to go, my instinct says to shoot the medic, but... 
you know, I do. <laughs> I love his animation. He's just rocking back and forth. I find that hilarious. Um, but do, 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 do. the shy guy had the least amount of dizzy on him, so I'm gonna go after. Uh, I had to go after him first. Well, I didn't have to, but it was the best idea to go after him first. Many guys are annoying because they they heal they heal enemies, and that's no cool. Good. So we're just gonna. We're just gonna take care of him first, and then kill the Sky Guy, and then we can go on our merry way. See, like, most of the time, I would just ditch Dizzy Dials, because I'd rather just keep healing items. But if you just use the items as soon as you get them, they don't take up space in their inventory after they're used. So, it's just, you know, you're more... You, the, if the game gives you an item, you should just use it. It's something that I learned, I guess, after playing other RPGs. Especially, um... Ow. Especially Shin Megami Tensei 4, because in Shin Megami Tensei 4, like, the, that's the one game I think I've played where I actually use the kind of, uh, the kind of, like, the, the, the items that do... Well, okay, I say the one game, and I also do it in Final Fantasy 3, but in Final Fantasy... In Shin Megami Tensei 4, I actually use the items they give you that just do elemental spells. Like, I never do that with any other game, so... It's just, it's really, you know what, just for shits and giggles, I am going to knock down the balloons. Why not? Um, but anyway, yeah. Um, does he take damage when he falls? No, he doesn't. He just becomes a shy guy. Okay, but anyway. Uh, but yeah, like, using items is something I never got into the habit of doing. Uh, but, you know, after I played Shin Megami Tensei 4, where, in where items are very useful, even the items that just do, like, elemental spells, like, I use those so much in that game. Um, it's just, I kind of decided to use it in this game, even though you don't really need them. It's, it's, it makes the game easier, and, you know, who doesn't want that? So, yeah, I just, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, do we have any new, new donations, Ryan? Oh, I messed up the, the timing on a hammer attack. I can't remember the last time I did that. Uh, but do we have any no, new donations? Yep, we have a £10 donation from James. I'm kind of strapped for cash right now, so this may be my last donation, but good luck with the three anti guys later. Put this towards Ganon's Fury. Thank you, dude. I appreciate that. And I believe this is the Defense Plus badge. Okay, so you do get both the Defense Plus and the Power Plus badge in this chapter. And again, they just give you the Defense Plus, but you have to work for the Power Plus. So, I kind of have a feeling that they initially had, uh, and I think they might have initially wanted you to do, like, another fight, like, for it, but they, they might might have scrapped it at some point. I'm not really sure. It'd be interesting to see how the how things changed in the development of this game. Okay, so actually, oh, no, wait. Uh, thankfully, if you run into a Shy Guy in this area, it's just one, and you can kill that in one turn, no problem. So, yeah, but... This is actually a really important area, not for this chapter, but for the next chapter, because, um... Hold on a moment, I need to kill that guy. Okay, but, uh, yeah, so... Hidden in this area... Or, by hidden, I mean just out in the open. This is the Ice Power Badge. That is super important for Chapter 5. You absolutely need that that badge for Chapter 5, so don't forget to get it there. And with that, we've got the Frying Pan, so awesome. Um, now we can go and do a lot of different stuff uh, with Taste Tea. So we're going to backtrack back to Toad Town and take care of that, because that is an item we absolutely need to have in order to... Um, uh, well, in order to progress with the game. So, let's go back to Blue Station. And, you know what, just for shits and giggles, since I didn't, uh, since I didn't, uh, show it off last time, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to look at, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna show off the, the train station thing. And while I do that, actually, on my phone, I'm going to look up, I'm going to look up recipes because we're actually getting to the point where um we actually can paper mario i really should have remembered to do this uh oh wait hold on it's in my it's actually in my um in it's actually <sighs> wait what the hell i'm gonna i i it was spam never mind um uh ray spam not okay hold on a moment paper mario hold on i just i want to rest recipes. I just, I want to look these up because I, I want to see if I can cook the whack-a-bump I have in, uh, into something. 
useful with the items that I have. So, let's see. Um, okay, hold on a moment. Uh, sorry about this. Um, okay. No, I'll, you're not. I'm a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so hold on. Uh, oh, yes, we can! Okay, so hold on. This is actually... We can actually uh, make one of the best uh, items in the game. Um, so hold on a moment. So yeah, I'm actually... I'm glad I looked it up. Um, oh, damn it. <laughs> okay, so... We can actually... With the items we have, we can make one of the best item things in the game. So, um, Hooray. Okay, hold on. It might actually... No, I won't go backtracking for it now, but maybe uh, later in the uh, when I have to go back into the Toad Town tunnels, um, I will make something. Oh, wait a minute! Ah, oh, shit. I forgot. I need the cookbook for that. Oh, okay, but... Alright, whatever. Um, don't cook. Okay, there we go. So now that we have the cook... Okay, I... Sorry, that was my fault. I misremembered the area. Basically, what's happening right now is we can uh, use Case Key to cook stuff again. That's great. Uh, when we get the cookbook, which we get from Gourmet Guy after he fall, after we get rid of him, we'll be able to cook multiple things at once. And that's when we can make one of the best items in the game that I've actually not used very much, so. What is said item? Uh, the Deluxe Feast. It's something that you cook with the Wackabumps in a strange leaf. So... That's actually why you actually Wackabumps on their own are good healing items, but if you use them and conduct, if you cook them with the Strange Leaf, they become even better. They're almost as good as uh, Ultra Jellies, uh, which, if you don't know, are just flat out the best healing items in the game to me. So, like, I mean, there might be something better, but I don't really remember it if there is. So, hmm. yeah. Um, that can't be any more outrageous than Superstar Saga. Uh, Superstar Superstar Saga is pretty easy, uh, right? Yeah. yeah. They'll have like 120 HP and BP items when you won't have like more than like 80 at the time. Oh, at wow. the time of end game. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. That and, is... then they, and then they have max ones above those. Oh, wow. That's... Yeesh. I don't remember yeah. the healing stuff being that good in, in Partners of Time. Uh... No, I'm just specifically talking about Superstar Saga. Okay. Because from, like, I, I haven't been watching it because I've just been bad about keeping up with LPs in general, but appara uh, I remember I remember Chugga Conroy making a tweet about how Superstar Saga is pretty easy. Um, and apparently yeah, he's, it really is. And he's been breaking the game in half on top of that, too. So, mm. like, that's the thing about, uh, again, the thing about Mario and Luigi that I didn't like as much as Paper Mario is, is that you can go through a lot of fights without taking damage at all. Whereas in Paper Mario, you can reduce the amount of damage, uh, but on a general playthrough, you aren't going to be damageless. You are going to take hits still. So it still requires some, uh, some amount of planning regarding healing and stuff. So, yeah. Um, now, you have to give him the cake. If you give him any other item, he'll just spit it out and it's a waste. So you have to get the cake, which you can only get once you give the... Uh, the frying pan back. Yeah. And if you accidentally use the cake beforehand... Uh, you can get another one by getting cake mix in the toy box. So, you aren't ever locked out from this area. But, oh, this is delicious! Him and his Edward cosplay. <laughs> yeah, it's not a very good Edward cosplay, but, you know, whatever. I love Gourmet Guy. He's one of my favorite characters in the game. Um, but anyway, um, you know, this section, uh, we have to go, but you do have to get past the section because that's how you get to um the third section of the game of the area the third uh, the third section of the third section of of the shy guy toy box it, you get to that by um ah, you get to that by uh by you have to go you have to ah sorry i am getting really kind of scatterbrained and i apologize uh, but in order to get to the third section of Shy Guy's Toy Box, you need to uh, fix the train tracks again. And in order to do... Well, not again. This is the first time you have to do that. But you'll have to do it like three times. But in, or, in order to fix the train tracks, what you have to do is uh, flip the switch, which is past Gourmet Guy. In order to get past Gourmet Guy, you need to get give him a cake. And in order to give him a cake, you need to get Tasty's... Uh, you need to get Tasty's uh, uh, frying pan back. So, I don't know how you bake a cake with a frying pan, but whatever. They find a way. Actually, I wonder if a fried cake would be any good. 
Like, uh, they, they have it. They have it? Oh, of yeah. course they have it. We live in America. They, they can summon many guys? I didn't know that they could do that. I thought they could only summon other Groove guys. Uh, okay. Well, now you know. Okay, well, you learn something new every day, I guess. Um, then again, I usually don't leave them to summon people. I, I try to kill them before that, but... Yeah, Shy Guy's Toy Box isn't very hard. It's just got a lot of annoying enemies. Not necessarily hard ones. And since you're going back and forth in and out of the town a lot, you get a chance to heal almost constantly. So this area will not be taxing you very much. But I think it makes up for it in Chapter 5, because I think Chapter 5 is one of the, the harder areas in the game. So the game does get more difficult after this point, if you're thinking it does, it is too easy. And again, it is a pretty easy game, because it is, it is to some extent, intended to be a baby's first RPG. Um... But I think it's also I think it also does a very good job at doing that because this was the first RPG I played other than Pokemon and Pokemon is an RPG that really follows its own rules so I don't even really think it, it counts but this game I think does a very good job at teaching the the mechanics of an RPG to especially a younger crowd or a crowd that's not used to RPG mechanics in a way that um, in a way that is enjoyable because you know the it's not super hard i think the most helpful thing for me personally is that we deal with very low numbers so instead of having like attacks that do like 1352 damage you got attacks that do like three and it's just a lot more basic math so i think like any i you could probably give this kid to this game to a kid uh, as young as like five or six as long as they've got basic reading material and they could have a good time with it, which I think is the most important thing. So, yeah, it's just, this is one of my, I just, I, I love this game. It's a great game. <laughs> we noticed. <laughs> it's, I, I mean, it's, it's just, I get, I, I just, I think it goes to show that, you know, even, I like Thousand Year Door better than this. Like, I've made that point clear. But even so, I can still play this, I've still played this game about like 20, 30 times, and I don't get bored playing it. I always go back to play it, because it's just so much fun, and jumping on that guy was a bad idea. Ow, ow, my toes, my toes! Um, my toes, my toes! Oh, but this is a good point to use the snowman doll at the very least. Um, yeah, this is the fight I think I wanted to keep this thing for, because I believe this will one-shot all of them? No, it won't. Okay. Well, at the very least, I can use uh, Cooper's Power Shell and take care of them all in one hit. So, you know, uh, no loss. Well, I mean, I did lose three flower points, but I'm at almost max when it comes to those anyway. So, no big deal. NBD. Um, actually, hold on a moment. Um, I'm trying to, um, I'm just, I'm trying to think about something. Um, in the next area we go to, I think the next area is the longest area in Shy Guys. Oh, uh, how fitting. Uh, that was your phone. Right? <laughs> yes, it was. I'm putting okay. it on silent. No, it's fine. We all forget about that. I'm pretty sure I've had my phone go off while I was playing in the phone, so don't worry about that. Um, if I remember correctly, though, the next area is the green area, and I think that's the longest area in the chapter, but I think there's a way I can do it so that I can... So I, There's a way that you can do it so that it's just so that you you don't you can skip the backtracking back to toad town at the very least and i'm gonna try to do that just to keep things just to keep things simple i will backtrack to toad town before i uh go fight the boss but i do want to keep the backtracking to a minimum before then go bet to, to, to green station um and we're leaving all aboard okay so yeah, this is Green Station. Okay, this is the area I was thinking of. Actually, I think this actually might not be as long as I remember because I believe this is also one of the areas that doesn't have any anything to the left. Okay, it has to do with these these boxes here. Um, I believe I can skip a significant chunk of uh, I believe I can skip a significant chunk of uh, of time here if I just um, uh, hold on a moment. Uh, doop doop doop. Do uh, I want. I want the coins. There we go. Okay, so you need to use bow to get through this this graded thing here. Um, but okay, yeah. So I believe if it, I believe we might be able to skip a lot of area if we. Yeah. Okay. So I need to remember yellow, green, red, blue. Uh, I can't remember if it's always that same color combination though. It might be. 
Um, but I think theoretically, if I just do yellow, green, red, blue, and press it on the buttons back there, I can just skip the entire next area, uh, this this entire area in its in full. Um, I'm just trying to remember if there's anything else. Oh, uh, oh no, the sleepy sheep. Ah, damn it. Okay, well we got the mystery now. Yellow, green, red, blue. Okay, well, is there anything else? Oh well, there is a there is a star piece over here, so I am going to get that. But I'm not going to bother getting the the, the the dictionary for Rusty because I don't uh, who cares about that guy. Um, but yeah, there's a star uh, there's a star piece down here, um, so I'm going to get that. Uh, if you go and you fight the the enemy over there or you get the item over there, whatever uh, you told Bowser that you wanted to have happen, I picked Pokey by accident just because I was mashing the A button. And oh look, a slot machine. Doop doop doop. Uh, I think if you... Oh, well, no, I got <laughs> I got Shy Guys. Okay, you can keep on playing that. I think you can get a pretty decent coin payout if you keep on spamming it, but it's just basically a diversion, really. What? Robotnik's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Taking okay. all of my rings. <laughs> Wrong franchise, Ryan. And besides, it's not even a fitting because we're not even, like, pinball. Jeez. Mm, okay, so, hold on. Yeah, yellow... Green, red, blue. If it's always that combination, and I believe it is, because I remember yellow, green, red, blue being very familiar, you can just skip that entire room. <laughs> but if you don't uh, do that, uh, if you don't do that, then you'll, um, if you don't do that color combination, then you actually have to, if you don't, like, know to get that color combination, then you have to, uh, then you have to go backtrack back to Toad Town and get the, um, and get Rusty's uh, dictionary back, and then you gotta have him uh, read the mystery note, and then remember the color combination, and then, and then you're good. But anyway, you pull this lever here, and then you can go, uh, and you can go to Red Station from the first station without having to go all the way around, which is, which is good. So, I'm just gonna, I'm going to backtrack very quickly to the. Um, I'm going to backtrack very quickly to the to Toad Town to get supplies and to and to heal, and then we're going to um, um, wait. Hold on. What is my? Yeah, I want to heal. Uh, we we don't have any star power, so yeah. Okay, so yeah, so we're we're coming up to the end of the chapter and thus the end of the segment for today, Ryan. Uh, yep. So um, let me do... check donations. But yeah. go ahead. Yeah, so why don't you work at ch uh, check donations. If you have any uh, questions about Paper Mario that you would like to ask, uh, now's probably a good time. Um, well, until the next uh, session anyway. Yeah, um, yeah, until the next session, now's probably the best time. Um, uh, we have a three-pound donation from Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> hey, all Sonic here. You guys were amazing last year. Keep at it. I'll tell my other friends about the nintendo -thon. Sorry for the low money you guys have been. i got to talk to someone at Sega. I will I want to shave my arms. So it gets itchy. Good luck. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Um. Oh man. Wow. Why? Why is he donating during the Mario game though? Hey, yeah. why aren't we running Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games? Because that's just mini games. Yeah. But we ran that last year. <laughs> True. Yeah. We also okay. tried to run Sonic uh, Chronicles last year. Oh yeah, that was the best idea. Okay, but anyway, I, I definitely wanted to go back because now we have uh, the cookbook to give to Tasty, and so with that we can give her, uh, we can give her the Strange Leaf and the Waka Bump, and then um, I believe if I if I have this right, that should give us the Deluxe Feast. Yep, that's this dish is one of my specialties. So that means that it's really good. Yeah, Deluxe Feast. It he restores 40 HP and 40 FP. That's one of the best healing items in the game. So, yeah, um, uh, I'm gonna cook the dried pasta, <laughs> just for shits and giggles. Uh, no. Um, yeah, then you shall cook dried pasta. Uh, this, I believe you can, uh, you can, uh, f uh cook pasta with anything. Uh, so, well, not with anything, but with a lot of different things, and it'll heal a pretty decent amount. So, and it's cheap, too. It's in dry de desert, so. Now we have a question. Will this be an all-tattle run? Uh, I'm tattling almost everything, yeah, um. I believe the only thing I didn't tattle was, um, I believe the only thing I didn't tattle was the individual Koopa Brothers, because that's, 
uh, that's just a waste of time. And they all basically have the same thing. But I will be, I am tattling every enemy. Uh, a lot of people like using the the peekaboo badge, but I don't like doing that because uh, the peekaboo badge is basically just a waste of badge points when you can tattle and then use those badge points for something different. Actually, hold on. We have people going lots of spaghetti. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> lots of spaghetti. Um, okay, so also, oh yeah, I forgot to give the calculator back. If you give them the calculator, that not only do you get the ability to go back to the to the to the bad shop. But you also get the I Spy badge, which is basically needed if you want to find every hidden floor in the entire game. Uh, like hidden trapdoor with a star piece in, in the entire game. That's where a significant percentage of all of the of all of this the the star pieces are. Oh, and I forgot that if you go in here, a shy guy took over the took over the shop. Uh, I actually I wanted to buy a mushroom uh, was the thing I wanted to do because I believe if you uh, you buy a mushroom. Uh, you, if you buy a mushroom and you mix that with cake mix, you get a shroom cake. Uh, and I believe that's also a pretty decent healing item as well. And I just, I like taking advantage of Tasty, because if you combine items that you generally get something better, and also you get a save, uh, spots in your inventory, which is also good, because one of the only things about this game is that the inventory is really limited. Um, but again, uh, one thing that I found is, is that using items like like attack items um, makes it so that you don't instead of being a hoarder like I normally am it helps deal with like deal with that as much you don't have as many oh wait hold on I wanted to check the badges but you don't have as many problems with uh, item hoarding that way oh the jump charge uh, I don't think I need that I think that's generally not a good idea to get that um you can also you also save up on you also get coin you also save up on coins really easy and um, in Paper Mario. Like, here, I'm at 4, 458, and, and when I was playing, uh, the, the Brain Scratch run, one thing that happened was I actually maxed out the coin counter, um, and was, uh, by the end of the game, so, you know. Appar it, apparently, Russ T gives you a star piece when you give him back his dictionary. Oh, I do? He does? Apparently. That's what they say in the chat. Hmm. But that would require me going out of my way to talk to Russ T. And I don't so give no. a shit enough. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't do anything. Like, he's... Like, I know that they, they feel the... Uh, for the most part, I like the characters in Toad Town. Like, each one of them has a name and a little personality. And some of them have little stories. Like, there's a bunch of little kids that keep playing. For the most part, I like them. They're not as interesting as, say, Thousand Year Door. But they're nice. Um, Rusty, I never gave a shit about Rusty. <laughs> he was just, you know, whatever. So, he can... He can go... He can go dictionary lists for all I care. You know... He'll just have to live without the definition to nomenclature for the rest of his life. Oh no, too bad. <clears throat> or, you know, he could just go online and look up the dictionary there, so... Yep. Use the internet, nerd. <laughs> Actually, you want to know something? I just realized that somebody for, like, dictionary.com had to take the dictionary and, pr and transcribe every individual I entry by hand. God, that poor sap. <laughs> Whoever that was. I feel like, I feel genuinely bad for them, whoever had to do that, because imagine if that was your job. Ugh. Yeah, just be tedi It'd be tedious, but doable. It, yeah, doodle, doable, but that also would have to be the mo literally the most boring job in the world. So. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I'm probably. Okay, so there's actually another, um, there's, uh, ah, damn it, I didn't mean to jump on him. Um. Uh, do I want to fight this fight? No, I don't want to fight this fight. I'm going to run away. Okay, but uh, actually... Choose here... battles wisely. Okay. Is that supposed to be Peppy? A little bit. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I was just... I was doing ring around the... Um, ring around the enemy for a little bit. Um... Because, really, the only thing you lose when you run away is coins, and, like, there, I lost two coins. whoop de fucking do <laughs> So. Yeah, so, uh, we're nearing... Yeah, so we've got basically two things left before the end. Oh, the, the snowman doll. I forgot that there was one there. You're supposed to use Watt to find that, so. Um... Uh, yeah, we basically got two things left before the end of the chapter. We've got this mini boss with what the hell are you doing, Bo? Uh, we've got this mini boss with the lantern guy, and then we've got the um, then we've got the the boss of the area. So 
it's 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 pretty much almost over at this point so lantern and lantern okay and now we oh wait hold on i actually i want to tattle this guy um Oh yeah, it's called Big Lantern Ghost. And uh, so basically, the strategy for this guy is basically pretty simple. All you need to do is... Um, you you have to attack the Lantern in order to do damage to him. But once you can see him, you can uh, go to town. So it's pretty easy. All I generally do is jump on him with Mario. And then attack him with Bo. Because Bo does the most damage in the game at this point for no flower points like you can do power jumps and stuff on him but um oh good um there that was a, that's actually an important thing to to do um like you can do power jumps and stuff on him as mario but Bo. in this instance since this guy has no defense it's just best to attack him with Bo. um and that attack that you did right there where you shone the light um, if you don't if you don't block that, it'll always do two damage to Mario. But if you don't block that, it'll actually knock out your partner for two turns as well. So that's important to get the action command uh, on. Oh, and you actually do need to jump on him as Mario, uh, jump on the lantern as Mario in order to get it so that you can see the big lantern ghost. Okay, that's actually. Ow! Ah, damn it! If he jumps on you, he does five damage, which is a decent amount, but. Again, this boss fight is pretty easy because most of the time he wastes his turn by blowing into the lantern and making it dark again, which you can just immediately undo by jumping on it with Mario. Like, that's what he's doing right now. And he doesn't attack you during that point, so this is very simple. And it's I think it's basically only there because they just thought the idea of having a uh, an enemy that hides in the dark was cool. I think it would be cool if there were also, like, minions that he had as well that you had to... Um, oh, yeah, there, it happened right there, uh, where Bo got, uh, stunned. Um, I think it would be a decent idea if they also had, like, um, uh, like a couple of, I don't know, like, bats or whatever in the dark with him that also took damage from, uh, that also took damage, uh, from the, uh, that also took damage from, that also could be hidden in the dark, but, you know. It's just, it's neat. Also, I think they wanted to introduce the, the darkness mechanic in general because um, uh, the party member we're about to get is basically all about that. Um, and the party member... Darkness, no parents. Actually, Watt does have parents. Um, you get a letter oh, from... Oh, he does? Uh, well, okay, well, Watt's gender is also a thing. Watt is a girl, but a, a couple of different points in the game call Watt a him. So it's... I, I can understand why people get confused, but I believe Watt is supposed to be a girl. It's not like a like a gender confusion kind of thing. It's a uh, they just used the wrong gender <laughs> pronouns at some points. Like I believe like um, hold on a moment. Uh, yeah, because Watt's a Watt is a girl, but uh, you get a letter from her mom at one point. So uh, Watt, yeah, yeah. See, it's pressed down to have her her illuminate the area around you. I believe it's just if you. Um, uh, hold on. I believe if you, if you check, it's either if you check the pause menu, maybe, is it? Um, yeah, party, a uh, what? The child of Lil Sparky, she can produce, okay. Yeah, she, okay. Uh, no, wait, you know what it is? It's when you get her super block, I believe they call her a him. Uh, and I think that was just a mistake on the, on the translator's part. Uh, either that or maybe they just didn't clarify her gender in the, in the Japanese version. I'm not sure. Uh, you can upgrade, let's see. He'll, yeah, this is where the problem is, because it'll say, Hail Master Turbo Charge when Wada's really a girl. More parts of the game refer to Wada as a female, though, than a male, so that's why I think the game is supposed to have her be a her, and that's why I'm going to refer to her as such. Um, if I'm wrong, though, please let me know, because I don't want to... I don't want to be, like, disrespectful or anything. But as far as I'm aware, she is supposed to be a girl. Not that it really matters, because it's like Mario, but, you know, whatever. And also, does this work? Doop, 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 bonk. <laughs> nope. Okay, whatever. Um, I guess I could use an Electro Dash on the Spy Guy. The Spy Guys are actually a pretty cool enemy because um, uh, they have a whole bunch of different weapons that cycle if you're um, that cycle if you attack them. And I believe if you let them attack you with your hammer, with their hammer, you actually lose a command, which is something that you don't really start encountering until later in the game. So uh, that's important to keep an eye on. Um, but yeah, I just, I thought that was cool. Uh, so, yeah. Watt is one of my favorite party members in the entire game, uh, honestly. Um, 
her big thing is is that she can she has a, does a little bit less damage generally than some of the other party members but her big thing is is that she can pierce defense um uh, yeah, so, I was actually about to ask that. Yeah, because, um, like, if an enemy has two defense and her attack is at four, she'll still do four defense. And that makes her so useful against bosses. She is one of the best characters in the game. It's her and Bo, I think, are are the best characters by far. So. She's a, she's a ba -ba buddy. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, she is supposed to be a Bob buddy. I only just noticed that. Um, um, but. Yeah, a uh, Bombette's good too. Uh, mostly just for the early game, though. Like Bombette is really useful if you just want to take, if you just do not want to fight a group of enemies and you just want to take care of them all at once. Um, also, I like her personality too. Um, actually, an interesting thing about this game is is that you have more female party members than male ones, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, it's. Um, uh, I just I think that she's very flower point. Uh, she's not very flower point efficient because her bomb attacks take up a lot of flower points. Like I believe power bomb takes up like six, and uh, mega bomb or ultra bomb—I forget what it's called specifically—but that might take up like eight or ten. So, um, oh wait, hold on—I forgot that I have to hit that that block there. But um, it, it takes up she takes up a lot of a lot of flower points is is mostly the problem. So. She's not the most efficient party member, but, you know, you can't get much cooler than explosions, so, you know. It's pretty, that's pretty neat. Okay, so actually, with that sleepy sheep in, in tow, I'm gonna... Ah, damn it, I did not want to get hit by that. Ow. I did not want to have that happen either. Okay, so, hold on, I'm hoping this sleepy sheep actually does shit. Um, where the hell is it? There the hell is it. Okay, I just, I want to fight this battle because I want to level up before the boss if I can. And I think that if I win this fight, I should be able to do that. So, that's why I'm, that's basically why I'm doing it now. Um, and I should be able to get through this entire thing without even taking much damage either. So, I should be okay uh, for the, the upcoming boss fight. Um, and actually, I'm going to keep from switching party members just to... Um, get the attack the attack on the um on the pyro guy and yeah okay i definitely should be leveling up after this fight so um they really missed an opportunity to call him fry guy oh <laughs> but that's a completely different character ryan true yeah um like it's kind of weird because they do have some characters rhyme like uh like sky guy uh but it's just for most of them it's just blank guy so you know, I guess they kind of ran out of words. Ah, oh, and he heal healed himself. Not like it mattered, because I'm going to kill him this turn no matter what, but still. Eh, oh well. Um, boop. And boop. Oh yeah, and it doesn't even matter if I took that damage or if I leveled up anyway, so... Okay, there we go. And battle over. Leveled up. Okay, so I think... Level the up. Rev up. So, I think the only thing... Oh, I... Dusty Hammer. I'm not going to bother with that. The only thing I think I need to do is to uh, optimize my badges. And I don't really need multi-bounce or power smash in this upcoming fight. So, um... Uh, um what is useful for here, though, is, is more what I'm wondering. Um... um Actually, um, I'm going to keep Smash Charge and Power Smash, actually. Um, oh, and I've still got one left, so... I'll keep Power Jump, too. Why not? Okay, let's get going. Okay, so it, this area, you cannot get... Like, if you go to the right here and you don't have Watt, you just cannot get to the boss. So you do have to fight the Big Lantern Ghost first. So... Mm. Yeah, this was another part that I, I got kind of stuck at, but it only took me, like... 20 minutes to think oh i gotta go think to the rest of the go look at the rest of the area now again talking about songs that only play for like 10 minutes for like 30 seconds this is one of my favorite tracks in the entire game uh and it plays for just this one scene where general guy yells at you so um 
General Guy is the boss, right? General Guy is the boss, yes. And he's also one of my favorite favorite uh favorite uh, bosses just because the the shy guys are being annoying little assholes throughout this entire fight uh, entire game and then they and then you, you find out and so you think that they're like very chaotic and stuff and then you go to their boss fight and it's like a, a military operation <laughs> and i don't know i just i thought i think that's funny um so okay so this one's this boss fight's a little bit annoying if you're like me and you actually care about tattling all of the individual shy guys so but they, they're, they're, it's not really all that hard. Um, yeah, it's not really all that hard. There's basically just a handful of phases to the boss fight. Um, the first phase is all... Ow, 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 um, The first phase is the the one against the, the, the Shy Guy squad. And that's really not all that hard if you... Um, as long as you... Uh, use your big damage attacks because basically the the shy guy squad will do the amount of damage as their hp left so the more you damage them the more they'll um the more the the more you damage them the less damage they'll do and they just run away if you get them to low enough health so <laughs> you know you do not uh you don't even have to beat them all the way uh and they run away like wusses so am i the only one with guts <laughs> i also i love I just I, I love the shy guys in this game because they're just they're really they, they have good com comedic aspects to them and you know they just got like the bumbling the bumbling uh, I, I enjoy like the bumbling sidekicks and the, the exasperated commander I think that's it's it's a comedic trope that I think works and yeah. we've we've got stilt guys which are shy guys on stilts e yeah <laughs> 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 yeah um but you can get past uh you can get past this pretty easily just by um uh using star storm but i want to save my special attack for don't you, don't you have like shooting stars and stuff yeah shooting stars ow um but i want to save my special attack for later in the fight so yeah there's that's basically why and shit i missed by one <laughs> i missed by i was one power bounce away from taking care of uh, that guy, so I gotta take, do it the long way and take a little bit more damage. I've actually taken a lot more damage than normal in this, uh, in this fight, so actually, um, do I have a healing item that just heals health? I think most of them are just FP and healing, and I don't want to use one of those if I don't have a lot of FP down as well. Oh, and these are the Shy Guy stacks. Um, these are a little bit harder than the, uh, than the standard uh, then the stand. <laughs> I love that little thing. Um, but these are a little bit, uh, harder than standard shy guys. I believe if you use Cooper, you can knock one of them out. You can, like, uh, shorten the stack, but I think it's just, uh, a little bit easier to, um, I think it's just a little bit easier to just kill them outright. So, hold on, do I... I have... Um, you know what, I'm gonna use my Thunder Rage. Yeah, I'm gonna use my Thunder Rage here, and then I can kill both of them next turn, because I should be able to survive this next onslaught. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be fine. While you're preparing for that, we have a three-pound donation from a Mars Den. Next year, I suggest the pinball a -thon featuring Donnie. Please put this to incentives if there are any, so Ganon's Fury. Okay, yeah, thank you, dude. And, you know, as great of an idea as the donnie -a might be, like you know, he also he, he also need a break at some point, and I don't think any of us are as good as at pinball as he is. So, because um, I'm you know just frankly speaking, I'm pretty awful at pinball, so uh, I don't know how good I'd be at it. You're no pinball wizard. Nope, I'm no pinball wizard. There has to be a twist. You know what? I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna you know be the odd man out here. I don't think I don't like that song too much. It's not bad. It's just kind of whatever to me. Nope, nothing. Okay then. Okay. Nope. <laughs> okay, so general guy is is the hardest part of his own boss fight, which you know makes. Well, which makes sense, yeah. Yeah, it make which makes sense. But really, the hard part about him is that bulb up there. Um, so I'm actually gonna take care of it now. Um, boop. Ah. Does that will that break it? Nope. Okay, because the ball will do a lot of damage. Oh, oh, good. He didn't actually. Um, he didn't actually uh, use the light. The lightning attack does a lot of damage. Uh, How but much does it do? I don't remember. We'll have Goombario tell us. Uh, 
Let's see. Attack power is four. That's his bombs. The electric, uh, the electric uh, attack is five, and your party member takes two damage points. Thankfully, if you have Watt out, the electric attack will not do any damage to Watt because she's uh, an electric-based uh, party member. So uh, keep that in mind uh, when you have her on your team. Uh, when you're God. fighting this guy, but you can also break the bulb, and then it'll uh, keep him. It'll keep him from doing any damage to you, just in general, uh, with that attack. And it is the most dangerous part of the boss fight, Cause, so because it's a very hard attack to. It's a very hard attack to to uh, dodge or block, I should say. So yeah, uh, the best defense, the best uh, option I think to, for this boss fight is just to uh, use the. Um, is to use Watt as much as possible, and to, uh, with Mario, try to use power kind of attacks. Um, and actually, since I'm running low on health for Mario and I could potentially die, I'm going to out of sight uh, with Bo so that I can heal next turn. Because I actually, I didn't want to, I had forgotten how much, I had forgot, forgotten to take a look at my health, and it's just not looking good. So I think I'm going to use my maple, sur uh, my maple, my maple, my maple, maple super, sorry, and get myself generally healed up, and that should be all I need to do for the boss fight. So yeah, um, I'm using charge power power smashes with Mario because that'll that'll do a good amount of damage despite his. Despite Everyone's like Ted, heal. <laughs> I did heal, um, but yeah, um, that um, charged. Charged power smashes will do a decent amount of damage against him, despite the the high defense of the the tank. And uh, after that, you know, it's just it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, the bombs, I actually I've been relatively consistent with dodging the bot with blocking the bombs. And you know what? Just for shits and giggles, I'm gonna knock him out with a star storm. I just I like doing that. I think it's cool. It's cool. Finish her move. Finish her move. And he's down. I also like that he doesn't just uh, die like his tank falls apart. <laughs> and then, yeah, so, yeah, so 34 star points. Awesome. Uh, you generally, it, just for a, a tip, you're generally on, you're generally around the level the game wants you to be if you get 30 star points-ish when you beat a per boss. boss fight. Yeah, per, bo per boss fight. Uh, the way the game does level uh, does star points is a little bit interesting, but I don't remember the exact calculation. It has something to do with the enemy's level because the enemies also have levels that are hidden. Um, uh, it's I don't remember exactly how it works, but um, yeah, it, it's. <laughs> but anyway, with that we get Muscular, the fourth star spirit, and we are done with chapter four. So. All right, are we doing anything else or? Uh, just the peach section. And then gotcha, gotcha. So, hey, so Ryan. Yeah. You ready for a cooking show? I'm ready for a quiz show. No, not a quiz show, a cooking show. Oh, a cooking show. Yeah, quiz show is after chapter five. <laughs> so next time. Next time we got quiz show. Are uh, we cooking with Chef Gordon Ramsay? <laughs> um, no, but actually, since Peach is, uh, Peach is baking the cake, I'm kind of... I kind of want to imagine Twink as uh, Chef Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> like this little adorable starfish little dude going like, uh, just yelling at Peach. <laughs> Being... Especially considering the fact that uh, most of the, some of the dialogue is actually pretty funny if you mess up on the cooking minigame. Um... Oh, and starting with the chapter four Peach section, they, they don't make you walk through the secret passage anymore, which is good. Um, but... Um, but if you mess up on the on the cooking show segment, um, like the, the gourmet guy will say something to the effect of, "What? Where'd you learn to cook? Uh, truck driving school?" And I just I think that's funny. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is actually important to uh, to note. This is the the treasure chest. Um, it's connected to the treasure chest in the Shooting Star Summit. Uh, if you put stuff that you collect as Peach into the chest, you can take it out as Mario. And there is a cutoff point where you can not get stuff in, where you can, like, lose the stuff you've collected as Peach. So always remember to do that if you collect anything in between uh, chapters. So, yeah, that's just what I wanted to mention. Although there's really only one more uh, section where I can really remember that being, like, uh, important. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, Gourmet Guy could turn us in, but that sounds like an awful lot of work. So instead, he's going to have us bake us a cake. And if we do that, then we won't get in trouble. 
So yeah, let's get going. Um, this is, I think, one of the more fun mini games in the in the game. Like you're just in this super serious dark castle, and then you just like nobody checks the kitchen for like a good half an hour while Peach bakes a cake. I don't know. Part of me just thinks that's pretty funny. Um, and also, I also ah damn it, whim. What? Bum 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 bum. Uh. I got caught. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, but, uh, what was I gonna say? Um, but yeah, uh, I also think it's really cool that it's slightly changed, but they also keep the, they also keep the layout in Paper Mario 64 the same as it is in Super Mario 64. So I just, I think that's a nice touch. Yep. Although there's no Bob on Battlefield room anymore, which is sad. Although I wonder, I gotta wonder why Peach has all of these uh, weird in, uh, interdimensional rifts inside her castle. Doesn't I think seem... it was explained because the power stars were stolen. So they were stolen, and Bowser put them in the paintings because. We... Yes. Okay. Okay. So anyway. Because um... Bowser is stupid. Yeah. Uh, how does the song go? Something, something. They bake a little cake. It's gonna something tasty. Gotta do your cooking by the book. You know you. I have no lazy. idea what song you're singing. <laughs> it's some lazy town song that became a meme for some reason. It's the same oh. show that has the "You Are the Pirate" song. Gotcha. Yeah. So anyway, we need to bake a special strawberry cake. So in order to do that, we need to first put sugar and eggs in a bowl. Okay. So uh, if you mess up at any of these points, you have to start the entire thing over. So make sure to. And one one thing that is a little bit uh, annoying is that. Um, if you you can't really get Twink to, to say the same directions over, uh, the directions over, you just have to start all over again. Now mix and whip the ingredients in the bowl. Okay, so I don't necessarily you have to mash the A button uh, for 10 seconds. I don't know necessarily how fast you need to do it. Like I think if you don't press it at all, you'll fail. But there's no real indicator for how you need to do it. I just mash as fast as I can. I don't think the better or worse than pop and baking. Uh, poppin'? Oh, no. Well, at the very least, it doesn't break your frickin' touch screen. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> uh, put flour and butter in the bowl. Okay, flour and butter. So, um, they actually do have a few, um, they actually do have a few materials that you just never need to use, like salt. Salt, as salty as salt gets. <laughs> so much salt. Uh, so anyway, and we've also got some butter. Um, so anyway, after we do that, I believe, uh, now we have to, okay, we have to, I believe we're actually getting to the point where we actually have to bake it, so, um, yeah. See, Peach actually bakes cakes occasionally, sometimes. Yeah, but she has to use the cookbook. <laughs> True. For how many she's done, she should know it by now. Well, to, to be fair, like, we've never actually, maybe this is, like, just her first time, like, who knows? Yeah, maybe. Anyway, we've got 30 seconds. Uh, we've got to keep the, the thing in here for 30 seconds. Uh, so I'm actually going to get the timer out so that um, so that I know what I'm doing. So put it in the oven. And go. Okay. Two, na, 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 na. <laughs> yeah, so I've got a timer going. Um I, I think they give you a little bit of leeway on this one, but it's so it's not too bad. Um, but it does have to be roughly 30 seconds. So gotcha. Yeah. Uh, uh, now. OK. All right. So what kind of kitchen doesn't have its own timer. Um, that, uh, Peach's kitchen like. I don't, I don't know, like, she's a princess. I don't know if she's even been in here before. We're going to decorate it with cream and strawberries. Awesome. So we're going to get cream. Bathe in the pool of strawberries and cream. Strawberries rub and exfoliate gently. The cream travels places you can't even dream. Ugh. You know all these weird songs. <laughs> I love Ninja Sex Party. They're, like, the best band ever. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, I think I just dreamed it. How was it? Amazing? Ugh, you mean ugh, astounding? Yeah, you do. <laughs> uh, so hopefully I didn't fuck up and we can just end the, and we can end the section. So, thank you. Um, okay, so 
Let's see if he thinks it's delicious. Oh! 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 This is delicious! Oh, uh, so it was good, but apparently it wasn't so good that he'd fly through the ceiling. So, okay, I guess he's, he's had better. He's had better. So he just tells us that we have to go to Mount Lava Lava on Lava Lava Island, and then he just kind of waddles out. Uh, I don't know, maybe he's going to try the food court next. Uh, I, I the castle know. has its own food court. Well, where does everybody else eat? <laughs> True. Well, does anyone else even eat? Um, There's a toad kid that asks for shrimp cake. Uh, so the toads do eat. Yeah. Also, though they they eat mushrooms, which is all sorts of weird, but whatever. Um, yeah. Also, I I just I like the joke there. It's just like she tells him to keep down because she's a prisoner before she remembers that she's not in a room. <laughs> so yeah, this game isn't as funny as the as Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, but I still think it's very it's very humorous and charming. Uh, so yeah, so this is. We're wrapping up the, the Paper Mario second segment, so I'd like to thank Ryan for keeping me company. Um, no do, problem, Ted. Uh, do we have any last-minute donations? I just refreshed it. No, we don't. Okay, so after we get through this this cutscene, uh, I'm going to find a save block and call it a day. So, uh, that's good. Yeah, so it was... Um, yeah, I, um, this is this. Those were some of my favorite seg seg segments of the game. Th one good thing about uh, Paper Mario, I think, is this that there's no real, there aren't too many slow points. Like, I think really the slowest chapters in the game are chapters two and six. So for the the majority of the mi uh, of the mid game is pretty is pretty engaging, I think, which is uh which is helpful. So yeah. So anyway, he, uh, P Twink tells us that we got to go to Lava Lava Island, which is cool, and well, it's actually warm because it's tropical. And with that, I think we're gonna call it a day. So. Uh, thanks everybody for watching, and I hope you guys have a good rest of the Nintendo Fun. Coming up next is um, uh, Mega Man X Race. Mega Man X Race. So I hope you guys stay tuned for that. Later.